up because the storm is headed your way. And we have the possibility here of, you know, just some, some damage with this storm. We've been tracking them out of Arkansas, and they have really raised a ruckus as they move through that area. To give you a heads up, Paris, the storm should be in your area around 1125. That gives you over 20 minutes to get into your safe place. So please do. This is a particularly dangerous uh, storm as it moves towards the east. So let's have a look, a closer look at the storm as it moves eastward right now. And you can see it is pressing right through here all the way over to Perrier, Nobles, and also into Paris as it moves towards the east. This is Sharon, and this is where a tornado was spotted on the ground there in Sharon. So this is more than just a radar indicated tornado that we're seeing here with this particular cell. I've done a track for you to give you some idea of where this storm is headed and the times that it will be making it there to around Cottage Grove at 1113 and over to Sunnyside at 1127, continuing to Elkhorn at 1131, Paris Landing State Park at 1135. If you are in Paris, I want to make sure that you go on and take those precautions. What are they? Well, you're going to head to your safe place, and that's going to be the lowest level of your home, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible as this storm to, moves to the east. Now, it's not yet in our viewing area, but but this is your early warning as the storm is moving towards the east right now. What we've been tracking throughout the night, of course, has been numerous storms across parts of Arkansas, and they have produced tornadoes as they moved on towards the east right now. And you can see just how close it is at this point, making its way into Henry County. So a lot to keep our eye on with this particular storm. We can give you an idea of what it looked like as it pulled a little bit um, farther off to the west. Let me show you the bigger perspective here to show you how this storm has been moving through time and we'll show you that bigger perspective when I get over here and do a little bit with our controls and show you as we pull out and take a peek at how things have come together with the storm as it's moved off toward the east. We'll get that regional perspective here. Look at these lines of storms. This is why we're so concerned about what's going on. We have not just uh, single storms. We have a whole line of storms that's going to be moving on towards the east right now. So we've got it uh, headed towards Lexington, Kentucky, and you can see all the way down towards Memphis. So a lot is taking place in this general area as the whole line continues to move toward the east right now. And back behind it is yet another line that is going to be making its way in as well. And no wonder there is a tornado watch that is in effect here across the mid-state. That tornado watch, by the way, has been extended until 5 a.m. And we have, you know, initially saw that in effect until 2 o'clock. But with the storms, as there's two lines behind it, it has been extended all the way until 5 o'clock in the morning. So what we want you to do is make sure that you're going to stay weather aware throughout the night and the storm is not quite yet to Paris but we want to keep an eye on that and keep folks updated on this but we're talking about a storm system that's going to be impacted many folks while they're asleep so we don't want that to be you make sure that you have uh, several different ways that you can find out about warnings as they're going to be issued throughout the night and our forewarned weather team several folks are going to be joining me throughout the overnight hours tonight wind advisory remains in effect until noon for tomorrow we are seeing our winds really start to ramp up across the mid-state. So we want to make sure that, that you are advised of that as well. Even outside of these thunderstorms, we've got some very high winds. But right now, we're tracking this line, a one-two punch with it as it moves on towards the east right now. Let's get back down to that cell, though, that we're seeing there in Paris and headed towards Paris, I should say. And it is, let's, let's dive down one more time and show you exactly where we're talking about. And with that, we are expecting to see some really high winds as it moves on towards the east. And let's check it out as we zoom back down into our area right through here. This is the storm that we're watching as it moves eastward. And let's get a closer inspection of some of the winds. Now, what we usually look for when we look for the winds with the storm, we're looking for the winds blowing toward the radar site and away from this radar site. So as we look at that velocity right now, we'll zoom on down. And you can see the little warning ring has already started to show up. That warning ring is giving us an idea of where the circulation is taking place. So we were mentioning it was very close to Sharon just a few moments ago. And look at all the lightning with this storm as well. Uh, it's, it is continuing to move eastward. So this is very important for folks who are in the Paris area because the storm is getting closer and closer to you as I put the reflectivity back on once again. And let's stop that motion a second because let's get a new storm track for you and give an idea of 
of how far away that storm is from Paris right now. I know it's moving so rapidly and that's the thing with these storms is they are moving rapidly. So we all need to be able to take action really, really quickly as the storms are moving through. Latest indication here going from where that circulation is and honestly, it's probably a little farther along. So let me get a little bit farther along because usually with the radar as it makes the beam moves around and this is coming from the National Weather Service radar is that beam moves around it's going to take it a few minutes to process. So usually that warning ring is a little bit farther behind our actual radar. Real time radar moves a little bit faster along. So this is going to be the Cottage Grove right around 1123 coming to you in per year around 1132 over to Paris at 1132. Also to Hazel right around 1134 and it continues on that track takes it to Sunnyside around 1137 Nobles around 1137 as well and over to Elkhorn at 11 1141, the Antioch Harbor Resort around 1142 as well. So if you're in those areas, uh, the storm is going to be moving to you at those estimated times. And we will certainly watch it and keep you updated every step of the way as we've been talking about these storms for days on end. And now they're starting to come here into the area. Take a look at those winds that we've been talking about here. And do you see the reds and the greens, how close they are together? That's showing us where that circulation is with the storm and you can see it right here. Remember how I mentioned that this is usually a little bit behind where the actual circulation is. Well, you can see right through here some of the circulation showing up with that storm. So most likely that's where it is. It's moved um, beyond Sharon at this point. When it came to the Sharon area, we did have reports that there was a confirmation of the tornado on the ground. So really important to to keep that in mind. Uh, we've also got reports here uh, from very strong circulation around about to move through Dresden as well. So that's another little area there in um, West Tennessee. Right there it is, Dresden, and you can see it so evidently here on the radar screen of moving through that area. All right, pull out again and we'll show you what's going on a little bit um, elsewhere across the mid-state. You can see how quiet it is. We've had a few showers, a few thunderstorms that have fired up here, but nothing serious. This is over at Jamestown right now. Just some lighter rain showing up for those folks at this point. And in Kentucky, this is where we've had a lot of really active weather. Those dangerous storms are well north of us at this point. But look at the size of that storm as it lifts off towards the northeast and all those warning rings there. So it is a night for intense storms. We've got all the key ingredients that are coming together tonight. It is incredibly warm across the mid-state. We are seeing our what we call our dew point temperatures. That's the moisture in the air. They are very, very high right now. So that is another indicator of these severe storms. Getting an update. Let's see if we've um, got anything to tell you more about this storm. Let me check. We've got some information coming in about this storm as it moves eastward right now. So let me check on the latest with that. OK, our warning is going to remain in effect until 1145, including northeastern Weekly County and northern Henry County. And we had a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado near Dresden or about 12 miles east of Martin moving to the east at 55 miles per hour. So this is a particularly dangerous situation with the damaging tornadoes and you can see the radar is showing it and also we've had confirmation of it. So we're talking a life threatening situation here. So please take those precautions we always tell you about. We're talking about flying debris with these storms and anytime you have flying debris uh, really to be quite honest with you that causes more damage um, in in a tornado or more injuries in a tornado than than really anything else. So all this stuff that's being sucked up inside the storm is flying around. That's why we tell you to go to the lowest level of your home. We want you to protect yourself with pillows and helmet, anything like that, blankets that can help you out. So if you're in Paris, that's one of the first locations it's going to come to as the storm moves into West Tennessee, uh, in, from West Tennessee into East Tennessee. It's one of the folks that's going to, one of the areas that's going to be impacted first off. So we want folks there to go on and head to their safe location. Putting back on that velocity one more time and there you go. There are some of the tips for you just over my shoulder that tell you exactly what to do going to that lowest interior room and then of course you're going to protect your head from the flying debris as I mentioned. Pillows, blankets, um, actually motorcycle helmets believe it or not 
are the best thing that you can use. And if you're in a car, a mobile home, we want you to find a safer place to be. As a matter of fact, you're safer to be outside the mobile home than inside that mobile home. Get into a ditch, and that's. Um, offers you more protection than being inside a mobile home where you can be quite vulnerable. Now, a rotation detector, that is what's showing us that circulation we were talking about. And here, checking on those reds and greens with this fast-moving storm once again, you can see exactly where it's located. And really, it's moving so quickly that it's getting beyond Dresden at this point. I could take off the rings so you can get a better view of where it's headed. Got two sets of wing, uh, rings there. And let me do another storm track. I want to take it from right where we're seeing that circulation, maybe just a little bit farther to the east from there. And as the storm continues to move towards the east, I'm telling you, it is moving so quickly. Oops, let me calculate that the different direction there. As it moves towards the east, it is going to be headed right there into Paris. So we'll get the latest storm track with this fast moving storm. And that's going to be at Nobles at 1134, continuing over to Elkhorn at 1137, Antioch Harbor Resort at 1139, and Paris Landing State Park at 1142, Lick Creek around 1145, and over to Fort Henry right around 1147. So if you're in those areas, get in that safe place. We've got some high winds with this storm. Even, even if we don't get that tornado in your area, the winds are going to be quite high with this. But we feel confident this is really a dangerous storm. So I want you to make sure that you are watching out for that and taking the advice we give you, which is to head to your safe place. A lot to watch for us tonight as we've got this whole line of storms. We have had so much in terms of damage reported with this line of storms. Let me pull out and show you the whole group once again. And it really is a group of storms that extends all the way up into Illinois, where we had some reports tonight of a roof collapsing on an Amazon building there. And then as the storm was moving through central Arkansas, it did damage a nursing home. And there's some reports of at least two people have died and also some folks who may be trapped inside that nursing home as well. So just know that these are very dangerous storms. They've already had a history of producing quite a bit of damage as they move towards the east. And with our atmosphere becoming more conducive to allow these storms to develop, we we know that this is going to be imminent tonight for some of us to see not necessarily a tornado, but certainly some some damaging weather with these storms tonight. That tornado warning, just recapping that, is for Henry and Weekly County as we head back over to that area and get uh, another view of what is going on here. And you can see our tornado warning that is in effect. That is in effect until 11. 45. It's about 1120 right now. So storm moving eastbound at 60 miles per hour. These are such screamers tonight. You know, we initially had estimated that the storm would make it into the Nashville area right around, let's say, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. But it looks like it's going to be a little bit earlier than that now. We could see that storm coming right here into Nashville uh, by the time we get to around 1.30 in the morning. So... We want to make sure folks are ready with that. Always want you to have different ways of getting the warnings. Our News 4 app is one way you can set that up where it will notify you for your county if the storm is coming there and certainly a weather radio. The main thing, the key here is we want something that's going to wake you up so you can find out about those warnings and then able to look at the radar. Our storm now is starting to move into Henry County, so it is now moving into our viewing area. We've been tracking it, of course, coming out of Sherry and now into Dresden as it's moving towards the east. And look how much closer it is to the Tennessee River right there uh, around 79. Let's zoom down and put some, some roads on here so folks who are in in the Henry County area can get an idea of exactly where that storm is headed. Probably a lot of lightning showing up with uh, the storm right now. This is over to Cottage Grove and Osage. There is New Boston. I want to put those winds back on there again. Now, if, if you're in the Cottage Grove area, that storm is really upon you right now. So please make sure you are in your safe place. Hayes Road, Picker Road, over to Fields Road, 
and uh, right around Abel's Road, over to Wagner Road. If those are familiar to you, you are right in the path of this storm um, as it moves towards the east. And I'm seeing Burks Creek Road as well. That storm will be moving from Cottage Grove over to Osage. And please, if you are in Cottage Grove, if you have not already made your way to your safe place, please do so right now. Um, we do have reports that we're seeing a um, tornado debris signature up to 10,000 feet with that tornado east of Dresden. So what that is telling us is that we have already um, had the possibility of a tornado that has lofted a little bit of debris into the air as it continues to move towards the east. So taking a look at our debris detector right now and looking for the evidence of that as that storm continues to move eastward right now. Checking some of the other threats with the storm. Uh, this is where we can see how high the winds are and the possibility of any hail. And whenever you see the red, like we're seeing right now, extremely high winds showing up. This storm is moving so fast and producing such incredible winds. I want to show you some of the estimates of the winds right now. We're talking about a tornado warning until 11 45 and look at this it's moving so quickly they've got an update there 80 mile per hour winds in that little yellow shaded area and then 70 mile per hour winds so even outside of a tornado with with winds estimated that high that's going to do some damage but it really looks as though we have got a, taint, a tornado on the ground this is a very dangerous situation we had reports of it on the ground in Sharon and also in Dresden and now that storm is moving to the east and here are here are the indicators right here, a rotation detector showing those winds moving toward the radar site and away from the radar site right now over Cottage Grove. And there's Vesey Road, and we can also see Hayes Road back through here, Sparks Road, Birds Creek Road. If you were in those areas, if those are familiar to you, those are landmarks for you, then please make sure you are in that safe place, which is going to be in the lowest level of your home, a basement if you've got it. Uh, certainly you want to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Now, if you've got friends over in the Perio area, over in Paris, please give them a call and make sure they're awake over to Nobles. This is a really dangerous situation as we have um, some confirmation of this on the ground. So please make sure that you let them know that it's coming uh, towards them in Perrier, towards them in Nobles, and headed towards the Tennessee River. We'll be crossing 79 very shortly. Fast moving storms moving about 60 miles per hour tonight. And just to show you about how far away this is from Nashville, we pull out and show you the larger view here. And, you know, an estimate perhaps around 130 that storm is going to be moving in. Let's go from the leading edge here and give you an idea. So we're talking about 90 miles from Nashville. So it's going to take about about an hour or so, an hour and a half or so, maybe even before 1.30 as this moves 60 miles an hour. So that's why we want folks to, to be aware the storm is headed your way um, if you're in Paris. And certainly this whole line will continue to move into the Nashville metro area before the overnight area, uh, overnight hour, um, I should say overnight hours. And then also these storms, uh, these locations in between around Clarksville and Dixon and over to Fairview will be in the line of that. Dover and Waverly too will be in the line of the storm as it moves towards the east. We'll put it back into motion. You can see that movement, see just how fast the storm is moving. If you're just joining us, tornado warning in effect for Henry and Weekly County, that is an effect until 1145. There has been a confirmed large, extremely dangerous tornado. It was near Dresden, about 12 miles east of Martin, moving 55 to 60 miles an hour. And that's why we're staying on with you to let you know what's going on with this storm because it is moving so quickly. It's going to be affecting a lot of people within a short period of time. And ever-changing, that's why we keep showing you back to this radar image again, back to where the winds are, and back to where this storm is headed. Let's back up here and show you the winds once again. And the reds and greens, that's what we always focus on, those Christmas tree colors. And the storm right now is getting closer and closer to you in per year, also coming very close to Nobles. And you can see just how far it is from Paris. So the center of circulation looks to be about nine and a half miles 
off to the northwest of Paris. If you're in Paris, heads up, that storm is headed your way. And we'll show you just how far it is away from the Nobles area, moving about 60 miles an hour. We're talking about 11 miles from, nothing and a half miles from Nobles. Latest storm track, going to give you an estimate of how much quicker that's going to be there. And look, we just got a new scan, a new update, so it's pushed a little bit farther. So that's going to bring it in as we go about 60 miles an hour moving towards the east. Update is to Antioch Harbor Resort around 1140, Paris Landing State Park at 1142, Fort Henry around 1148, and Stewart at 1156, and then over to Dover at 1157. Tornado warning continuing in effect there. It looks like um, we're also going to see a tornado warning issued for Stewart County. The storm is moving so fast that we want to give folks in Stewart County the opportunity to make sure you're in your safe place and watching this storm, tracking this storm. I'm telling you, they're moving so quickly, you have less uh, reaction time. So that's why the warnings are going to be coming out a little bit quicker. So you can see Dover over here. Dover, that's um, going to be the next spot in line, perhaps around air, and you're going to get some of this heavier, heavier downpours with this storm, some of that thunder, some of that lightning. It looks like perhaps if it stays on this track, that the tornado will stay north of you if you're in Erin, but we want you to know that it's going to uh, come very close to you. Dover, and if it continues on this line, that's also going to bring it very close to Clarksville within the next uh, little while. So if you're in Clarksville and you're staying up with us tonight, know that that storm is going to get a lot closer to you before too much longer. Let's pull out, let folks know what's going on elsewhere across the mid-state. You can see the focusing area is right here towards the west. There's just a few showers elsewhere. Of course, across parts of Kentucky tonight, we have had some really violent storms here. They moved up toward the northwest. And let's check down that line and show you as I'm, I'm going to switch over to the Memphis radar because that's going to give you a better idea of what's been happening uh, just off to the west of us and what is continuing to happen there so we can fill in with that radar. And look at that. There's a severe thunderstorm warning uh, we find here stretching all the way back down towards Memphis. So there's a lot more to go before we are done with this. The good news is these were all tornado warnings a little while ago, but now we're seeing more severe thunderstorm warning, so we will take that. But we do expect these storms to remain quite strong and potentially severe as they cl get closer and closer here into Middle Tennessee. I've switched back over to our real-time radar, the only station here in Nashville with a real-time radar. It gives you a real-time image as we sweep. It just takes our, our sweep 60 seconds to get around, so you're going to get the most up-to-date image of where that storm is. Moving into Purrier right now as we speak. Let's get the latest on those winds. And there the storm is right on top of you if you're in Purrier. Um, Hazel, it, you're just off to the north here with some very high winds. Nobles also seeing some very high winds there. And the storm looks like it's going to stay just north of you in Paris. That's the center of that circulation. You're no doubt hearing some of that lightning there in the distance. It's going to be crossing 79 or at least moving right along 79 on a route that could take it very close to folks there who are in Dover. Latest as we get here on our storm track. We'll go from the leading edge this time of that storm. And I'll have to pull out my window a little bit more to get that 60 mile per hour wind speed. This should include um, some of those communities, including Dover. So Paris Landing State Park, um, the state park there, you can get a clip of that storm around 1141 over to Fort Henry, 1145, and into Dover at 1154. So if you're in Dover, you've got about 25 minutes or so to make uh, your preparations there to head to your safe place. Um, Stewart County around 1156, Bumpus Mills around 1157, over to Carlisle at 1159, and Atkins at midnight, Wyatt's Chapel around midnight as well, and over to Big Rock around midnight. So those are your, your latest times for the storm to continue to move across. Pull out a little bit and put this into motion and show you the speed of this storm, about 60 miles an hour, pretty incredible. We do have some new information to share with you here. Um, as our tornado warning does remain in effect until 1145 for folks there who are in Henry County. Now, the tornado warning I mentioned to you is going to be issued for Stewart County. That's going to be in effect until 1215. 
So the storm is very close to Cottage Grove, as I showed you just a few moments ago. Um, it's about eight miles northwest of Paris now. We did a calculation a few moments ago, so it's moving even closer. The movement is to the east around 60 miles per hour. And, you know, what we want you to do is make sure that you're protecting yourself from flying debris. So that's why we always tell you to get in the lowest place of your home, putting in as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Just some things to keep in mind with this storm as it moves towards Dover, towards Bumpus Mills, towards Big Rock, land between the lakes and Indian Mound. We are talking about a lot of wind with this storm. So likely going to see some tree damage. Uh, we're talking about uh, damage to roofs and wind. Windows, and there is the likelihood that we can also have significant damage um, to mobile homes and, you know, just anything in the path of the storm. We could see some issues as it moves on towards the east and moves across the Tennessee River very, very shortly. Let's take a look at our debris signature one more time. All right, let's uh, let's stop that for a second. I want to point out something to you. You see this bright blue through here? It's likely that that is indicating some of the debris aloft from this storm. So that's why we're feeling a lot more confident that that you know that we could be seeing the the debris from this uh, tornado being lifted up. And that's always another signature of what's going on in the ground. But we've had reports here that we do have, we had a tornado on the ground in Dresden. And now we've tracked that over towards Cottage Grove here on our radar and very near Perrier right now as it moves towards the east at 60 miles per hour. With the speed of this storm moving so quickly, uh, we can see right there around Foundry Hill. Let's get some of these roads for you so you can get some identifiers around Park Hill Road. It's coming across Highway 641 and then Old Paris Murray Road, 10 Yard Hill Road, Shady Grove Road. So if those are landmarks for you, if you know where that is, that storm is on a path coming right across those areas. If that's your community, please make sure that you are taking the precautions that you need to. What we're telling you about this storm as it's capable of doing quite a bit of damage. This is really a serious situation. These are not just radar indicated tornadoes tonight. These are tornadoes where we've had some um, confirmation. And I'm just taking a look at um, some more notes that we have here getting in from our colleagues out at the National Weather Service. They too are seeing that tornado debris signature that I was talking about just a few moments ago with the storm as it moves towards the north. There's the reflectivity again and here is that signature that we're talking about where we're seeing the likelihood of getting some circulation with the storm right in through here. That's around Park Hill Road and headed towards Old Paris Road and 10 yard or 10 yard Hill Road too. Let's do a storm track just coming from there. And storm moving on towards the east 60 miles an hour. So that latest storm track, look at that. That's going to take it over to Paris Landing State Park, 1148, the latest time, over to Fort Henry around 1153, and Dover around 1153, and Stewart County High School. The pink you see there, that is where I hit the button back on for our rotation detector, and we're seeing pink. Let's get back to our reflectivity. This is our real-time radar that's showing you where that storm is right now. And there's Noble. It's off to the north there and getting closer to 79, Highway 79 on that path that's going to take it towards Dover. And Stephanie, if you've got our, our list of what folks should do during these storms, it'd be a good idea to pop that up again as we take a bigger view here of what's happening and the storm moving off towards the northeast. We'll get that going into motion for you right through there. Look at all that lightning too. This is such an electrical storm tonight. A lot of lightning is is really associated with this storm. So we want to give folks heads up over in Dover. This storm is headed to you. So we're talking about tornado warning. We're seeing signs on our radar with a with a debris signature and we've also had reports of a tornado on the ground. So make sure you're in the lowest level of your home a basement. If you have it, you want to maybe pick a closet or a bathroom, something small in the center of your home. And you can take blankets in there with you, pillows in there, a helmet, even, even a motorcycle helmet. That really provides you with 
extra protection from the storm because it's all that flying debris being sucked up inside that tornado that we want to protect yourself from. So make sure you have those things as you head into that room and be sure you take your cell phone with you because you can watch our coverage. You can see our radar. You can even look at the radar on your cell phone with our News 4 app. So that's just another way you can stay safe with these storms moving on through. And just a heads up, if you do live in a mobile home tonight, these storms are going to be sweeping across the mid-state. Please see if you can head over to our neighbor's house or a safer location tonight. I would feel much better about that for you tonight with these winds so powerful with this storm and this potential that the tornado could be moving into your area if you live in a mobile home. So those are some of the tips, some of the things you need to keep in mind with these storms as it moves on through. Let's go back to that radar full. If you're, you know, if you're well out ahead of this storm and you can see how far it is from Nashville, and you're going to go on and head to bed, just make sure you've got a way of waking up. Make sure you've got either a weather radio that's got an incredibly loud alarm on it, or you've got your app on your phone there and make sure you've got the ringer up and the batteries are charged up. But at this point, if you're in Nashville, not a bad idea to stay up as these storms are marching on towards the east. But we will certainly be here to give you the latest on where they are. And if they do sound off an alarm in your area, we will certainly let you know about that. Let's dive back down into the storm. It's moving along 79 right now. Look at all this lightning with the storm. Get back over to that wind rotation detector right through here. And it looks like we're seeing a little bit of that right in through here. So we want to get down a little closer, get some more of those um, roads. Buchanan, not far from you in Bethlehem. Some of the, the roads that we're seeing in the path of this storm, Forsyth Road, um, Swarstill Road, Rabbit Creek Road, and look how much closer it is to Paris Landing right now. This is the center of circulation, we believe, right through here. And let's get an idea of just how far that is from you. Over in the Paris Landing State Park area, we're talking about four miles. All right, how about from the Tennessee River? We'll go from that, that place there in Buchanan, and we'll clear that one and get over there towards the Tennessee River. And whoops. Let me click that button. Sorry about that. And there we go. And so that's going to be about, about eight miles from the Tennessee River. So give you an idea of where that is. We're in relationship to perhaps where you are right now. We've had some really high winds with this storm. Checking once again on where they are right now. And usually these are, because of the rotation of the radar and the calculations of the winds, they're usually a little bit behind where the actual high winds are. But this does give us great information, showing us 70 mile per hour winds, which are more likely over in this general area right here. As you can see my cursor as the storm is moving towards the east. But incredibly high winds with this. And then, as I mentioned, this is a tornado warning, and it's in effect until for Henry County until 1145, which it's 1138 now. And for folks there in Stewart County until 1215. And it's just a fast moving storm that's capable of producing tornadoes and likely is producing tornadoes as it moves through uh, per year and continues to move towards the east right now. That shows you the reflectivity. And look at this. Look how fast it's moving. Now, we've got one cell. Almost in, neglected that one. We've got one cell and yet another one that is coming in to per year. So kind of a, a one-two punch for you there. Notice how this is bowing out as well. So when you got that bow right there, some very high winds are likely along that, that front of that line as it moves eastward right now. And we've mentioned tonight that some of our winds have been so very high, just screaming as they moved on towards the east. Putting a little bit farther down through here so you can see how close it is to Paris Landing. I mean, it's moving so fast. I mean, every time I click this, there's a really an update on it. And you can see the movement to the northeast as we put this back into motion one more time. Quick movement, too, at 60 miles an hour. There it is, there's that motion. We'll pull out so you can get a little bit of perspective there of how close it is to Dover right now. Coming across the Tennessee River rather quickly as well. New storm track in order for us. We'll stop that speed one more time. There it is, and it looks like even intensifying a little bit with, with our new update on the rotation detector there. 
And that movement, 60 miles an hour, what a fast mover. It's coming right on over to folks there who are in Dover at 11.56, to Stewart County High School at 11.58, Wyatt's Chapel at 12.02, and over to India Mound at 12.04, Cave Spring around 12.09. Lisa Spencer, Tracy Cornett here in the studio joining you. Question, when it comes to this fast-moving storm, you mentioned that in our 10 o'clock news, that it's moving faster than almost anticipated. Tell us, um, is this a rare occurrence, or especially for around here in our area? You know, I, I, it is moving faster than storms normally move through here. And, you know, one thing, Tracy, that's been difficult, we were trying to estimate how quickly it was going to get here. It is moving faster than we had anticipated. So as a result, it's getting to places faster than we anticipated. Yeah. That's why we really expect it to be in Nashville, perhaps as early as 1.30. So that's, you know, a lot faster movement. That means it's going to arrive faster for folks in the Nashville area. And of course, with already tornado warnings right along this line, it's, you know, it's it's a really serious situation. We're hoping people are taking the warnings that we're giving very, very seriously. Um, right now, Tracy, it's uh, folks in Dover that are in line to see this storm next. Stewart County is under that tornado warning, and also uh, Henry County is still under a tornado warning as well. Some of the things we saw, and I know you've been reporting this in uh, Maysville, Kentucky, which is about northwest of Nashville, if you're not familiar with the area, just south of Paducah. There it is, uh, Tracy, right there okay, on the map. Okay, thank you. So that whizzed through there, but just even what we saw there, and I, I'm sure we can pull up those Twitter pictures to show the courthouse uh, there in that area. Uh, as this continues to move east, you know, this is a scary time for folks. You've always provided incredible you know, guidance, and here we go, looking at those pictures of the, uh, the after here of this structure. I mean, that... You know, that, that is a terrifying uh, experience when you live in this vicinity and you see something like this. Uh, we don't know how old this building is, but likely, you know, an historic structure. Uh, Devastating. But, but yeah, this is, you know, this is the example of the high winds, whether or not it's an actual tornado uh, usually remains to be seen. But you mentioned that these were already confirmed, at least one, right? Right. I mean, it is a confirmed large, extremely dangerous tornado is how it's being described. Wow. And it's now, Tracy, it's eight miles west of Paris Landing State Park. So we want folks that are in that area to, to be aware of that. Is that that same tornado? Some of the images we saw even out of Arkansas tonight, uh, just a massive before it went, you know, before we really hit darkness. Um, it was so huge, and that is the kind of thing that people are looking at and, and scanning and worried that, it, that something like that could hit us. Um, these kind of pop in and out, and it just depends on, you know, as, as you always explain, um, it kind of depends on what that circumstance is right there in your area when it comes to the area, when it comes to the air masses and how it all forms. But, right. uh, you know, go ahead and, and give folks an idea as far as what, what should they be listening for? What should they be watching for? Or just paying attention to you and going to their safe place when you tell them to? Yeah, that's the, that's the one thing we always yeah. encourage folks to do here is don't go out and look for the storm because usually in Middle Tennessee, these storms are rain wrapped, which means that you can't really see the storm itself because there's rain all the way around it. So you can't see that tornado, that funnel mm -hmm. cloud. Mm -hmm. So we don't want folks to go out and look for that. When you hear that warning, time to head to your safe spot. We pop up those suggestions from time to time so you, you can be aware of those. And here's the latest timing on this. Stewart County High School around 1156 is when we're expecting it there. Over to Big Rock at 1156. Dover 1157 is the latest time for you. To Wyatt's Chapel at midnight and to Atkins around 1204. So uh, Tracy, what we're telling folks is if you're in that area, that's, that's what we want you to do. Go on and head to that safe place. Don't go out and look at it. Don't wait for confirmation um, for it to be there. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to wait for confirmation. I can tell you already that we have um, had witnesses um, who have seen this storm. So this is definitely a tornado that has um, been spotted and continues to move towards the east. And that's something that as an anchor person sitting out here with you um, tonight, it is 11.45 p.m. We usually have to wait to report any sighting, any confirmation of a tornado, right, Lisa? Those are right. when the authorities come in. So this just goes to show what a significant storm 
a system really is. is moving through. And you know, we, we always hope that they weaken before they get to us, but that's not the case. And you know, they're really holding together. Our, our atmosphere a little earlier had what we call a cap on it. So it didn't allow those storms to grow because it was like putting a hat on your head. They couldn't yeah. grow and grow and grow. So as a result, we didn't see anything for the longest time, but now that cap is, is gone. And so now these storms are really starting to blossom. Look here at this rotation detector. This is, a, this is really showing us where we have that circulation right now. And I want to, I'm going to circle it first, but then I also want to drop down and show you some of the areas that are going to be impacted by this. So let's move on down a little closer. Look at that. That's around Fort Hyman, also around Mills Subdivision, Cabana Estates, and Liberty. If you know those communities, there is Paris Landing State Park. So it's just off to the north of that. We're seeing that center of circulation. If you're in Fort Henry, please make sure you are in your safe place. And I'm looking ahead over here, even farther down the line, Fairview, make sure you are in your safe place as well. There's Fort Henry Road. The storm is moving right through that area. It's almost paralleling Donaldson Parkway. See that right through here? And Old State Route 76, very close to that area. Let me pull out and show you even some more. And there's Dover right there. So if you've got some friends in Dover and you're concerned about them, I hope you are. Um, make sure that you give them a buzz and say, hey, you know, you've got this storm headed your way because we want to make sure folks are awake tonight. You know, it's, it's getting close to midnight and some folks may have already turned in by now. So please make sure that you give them a call. And really anyone who is out ahead of this storm, um, want to make sure they're up and awake. There's Woodlawn, there's Dotsonville, even farther down the line. This is a fast mover, so it's going to be moving to those communities very, very quickly. We can give you an updated timeline for you as well as the storm is moving toward the east really quickly at about 60 miles an hour. We're looking at our rotation detector here. That's what the reds and greens are, so that's the winds. Moving to Dover, 1158 over to Big Rock at 12.03 by the way, the high school there at midnight. And you know, that's less than 10 minutes from now or just over 10 minutes from now um, to around Indian Mound at 12.06 and then to Oakwood at 12.12. So if those are familiar communities to you, we are asking you to please make sure you are headed to your safe spot right now and you know, taking those precautions. The rotation is, is looking um, certainly a little bit weaker when we look over at our Hopkinsville radar than it did earlier, but nonetheless, I'm still seeing this holding together right through here as it moves towards Dover and comes across a Highway 79 right now. Now there's our reflectivity back on, and I like to go from time to time and show you the bigger view just to show how quickly this is moving. Now it is got more of a northeast, it's got more of a northeast drift. So if you're in Hopkinsville, you're likely going to see some of this activity because even though the whole line is shifting to the east, the individual cells start climbing up that line moving toward the northeast. So folks who are in there, and you can see it over my shoulder, there you go, that is moving towards you in Hopkinsville right now. Um, some of the cells are, but the whole line is going to be shifting eastward, headed towards Dover and also headed towards the Clarksville area eventually as it continues on this path, moving it east at about 60 miles per hour. And the line is a lengthy one as well. Here's the bigger view again because it's moving so fast, it changes so quickly. So look at this, it extends all the way back down from just uh, northwest of Paris. Memphis is now in the thick of it right now. The good news, they're not seeing any warnings right now. And we will take any good news that we can get. Knowing the history of this storm tonight, as Tracy was describing and showing us uh, those pictures, it, just devastating. And, you know, Tracy, some of the reports that we had earlier out of Arkansas, mm -hmm. uh, you can probably remember some of the, the issues that we had there uh, about a nursing home. Absolutely. Two people were killed in that nursing home in Monette, and I don't even know if that has been updated. I've continued to look at the Associated Press to see if that number has increased. Five others injured um, in that particular nursing home, and then out of that Amazon warehouse, that same facility in southern Illinois, uh, con you know, confirmations of a, of a massive tornado there, and we're talking about 
a mass casualty event. That's how officials have labeled uh, both of these at this point, that Amazon warehouse with uh, hundreds, at least 100 people trapped. These, again, um, is, this is so fluid at this hour in the middle of the night, right? Um, it, but it is a really significant storm. It is certainly uh, scary for a lot of folks, to, especially to think of elderly loved ones in that nursing home when we're talking about uh, two people confirmed dead and then five others hurt at this hour. So, yeah, Lisa, it's, um, it's one that, of course, that's why we're still here and we won't be leaving. Um, and we're going wall to wall here as we take a look at some of the cameras. This is a uh, video. I, I, tell me, Stephanie, if this is a live picture or these are, this is, okay, this is video of that nursing home. Uh, just to really put the human touch on what has happened and how terrifying this is in the middle of the night. And you're talking about uh, folks who feel helpless. Um, except for the, the, you know, the staff that's working there at this hour. So you're looking at this, just a massive response here to see if uh, folks are trapped there and, and the extent of the injuries and where they're being taken and all of that. So yeah, families are certainly concerned about all of this and it is uh, serious, significant, and it's why we continue to stay wall to wall to make sure that we can protect as many people as possible, which I know is your number one goal, Lisa, when it comes to warning people um, and giving them a timeline for exactly when the most severe storms may hit them. Absolutely, I, I did want to switch over too. We were watching on real-time radar, but really the Hopkinsville radar is a little closer to these storms, so we can look at it the, from that perspective as well. And we had noticed, um, just conferring with the Weather Service, that the rotation is not as you know as dynamic as it was a little while ago. You can see it's still right here. It's moving right now across the Tennessee River. I mean, it is literally coming across the river at this point. So that's good news that it's not quite as as impressive as it was, but it does not take much for this to spin up again. And it's still, you know, still we've got those dominant reds and greens are just not quite as as tight as they were a little bit earlier, not quite as strong as they were a little bit earlier. But let's get a timeline for you uh, since we've got this updated view here moving east, very quick mover. And we do this because the storm is moving so fast. We want to keep updating you on these times. Coming to Dover around 12.02, to Stewart County High School at 12.03, and to Atkins around 12.08. Continuing on this path takes it to Cave Springs at 12.15, and over to Oakwood at 12.16. So if you're in those areas, safe place, the best place to be is going to be the lowest level of your home. I always like to think of it as building a fort because you're trying to put as many walls between you and that storm as possible, protecting yourself from that flying debris. Basements are great, but not everybody has one here in Middle Tennessee. Look at the circulation right now close to Mills subdivision and also around Fort Herman. Just really close to the land between the lakes forest uh, northwest there of Dover. And it looks like the actual center is going to um, perhaps pass, pass north of Dover. You can see Dover right through here. So the center will pass north of Dover towards Bumpus Mills and Big Rock areas. But still, if, if you are in Dover, we want to make sure that you are hanging in there with us and we will we'll let you know when this is past us, past you. It's um, past Murray, past Hazel, past Perrier, past Nobles, and you're out of the woods with this cell right there in Paris as it moves, it's moved on by you at this point. So that's good news, still some heavy rain around. Let me put the lightning back on. We're still looking at quite a bit of lightning with the storm too, 54 lightning strikes just in the window that we see here with this fast moving storm off to the east around 60 miles an hour. And you can see it does look like these storms. Let me put that into motion again and show you how they're moving kind of more northeastward right now. Instead of due east, more of a northeast drift. So that's going to take it north of Dover. And good news there. But if you're on the outskirts of town, a little farther north, up towards Bumpus Mills, uh, hang in there. Uh, stay in your place there at your safe place in Dover as well. But it looks like the center will be a little bit north of you if you're in the Dover area right now. We'll put that back on again. And let me stop it from rotating here or moving through with our time lapse. And there's that image that's showing the weakening that I was talking about a second ago. Now it's headed towards Bumpus Mills. Dangerous storm though. All right, let's see. Taking a look at some of the notes as it's moving towards 
towards Bumpus Mill pretty quickly here. We'll do another storm track for you. I love to keep these updated because now it's moving more northeastward and that will give us some different times and some different locations that we want to have a heads up for. And you know, if this holds together on this path, that's going to take it up towards folks there in, in, in the Fort Campbell area. So heads up to them. If you know anybody up there in Fort Campbell, give them a call. Let them know this storm is going to be coming close to them so they can get up and make sure they're paying attention to the weather, staying weather aware. Bumpus Mills location around 1159 over to Herndon around 1216 at Fort Campbell at 1212 Northwest um, High School around 1221 and around Sherwood Forest at 1222. And Stephanie, was that a note for me that you were saying a second ago? Lisa, she was mentioning okay. that we've got a powerful image if we're able to show that. Uh, I don't want to interrupt anything. Please pop back in, Lisa. Uh, look at this picture. And, wow. and go ahead and describe what you see because this is from, this is the tornado that from Missouri into the, ten, into the Tennessee area here, um, into our state, this at 8.30 p.m., according to at least this Twitter post. So uh, that just looks so massive. Oh, it does. I mean, and that's what we've been hearing, Tracy, about this storm, that it, it, it's a massive, dangerous storm. And you know where we're talking about rain wrapped? It looks like I'm seeing a lot of rain underneath that cloud that is lowered, that wall cloud. And whenever you see that, I mean, that's what we're talking about by by them being hard to see because yeah. of the rain that's wrapped around it. So you have to be so, you know, so cautious about trying to get out and look at them. But that is incredible video. And that just goes to show you how dangerous these storms are tonight. When it comes to sheltering somewhere, if you're in a mobile home, as you mentioned, I know that in Mayfield, Kentucky, where we were talking about uh, uh, the roofs being blown off the you know, courthouse there and the Amazon warehouse there nearby as well. There's a shelter for displaced tornado victims at Mayfield High School tonight. Um, and Graves uh, County Emergency Management saying if you can walk safely, go to the fire station. You know, there are places and this is something just so important, even as this hits the Nashville area. And we just we hate we hate reporting on any fatalities in these things. And when you're talking about a mobile home, it is just so dangerous. You mentioned if you're feeling insecure about your place where you're living um, and, you know, go to a friend, call someone up and don't be shy about it. This is one of those nights that you really want to be in a safe place. Yeah, we, we certainly encourage folks to leave mobile homes tonight. And, and you know, even if the storm is, is bearing down on you and you're in a mobile home, it really is, and we are not kidding, it is safer to be outside in like a ditch or culvert, as long as it doesn't have water in it, much safer just than to be in a mobile home. We've heard time and time again um, what has happened with mobile homes. They just flip with these storms. So we want you to leave your mobile home. And the same goes for a car, too. You don't want to try to outrun a tornado if you're in a vehicle. Otherwise, we just say get that basement, get into the lowest level of your home, and put as many walls between you and the outside. So that means you want to be in the center of the house. You want to be in the bathroom, the closet. Those are areas that are much, much safer. And, you know, grab the pillows and blankets. Take them in there with you. If you've got a helmet, let the kids put their helmets on. And we're trying to give you as much lead time as we can. So make sure you're taking those ideas and putting those to use tonight in your safe place because they will truly help keep you a little bit safer. Um, we are looking at just reiterating our warnings that we have in effect right now. For Stewart County is in effect until 1215. The warning, of course, for uh, Perry, um, I should say, um, Paris area. Henry County expired at 1145. So that's the warning that we have right now. This is really a, a life-threatening situation with this storm. And we don't, we don't say that um, often. Um, because we have such certainty that this is a tornado that has been tracking across the mid-state and certainly has had a history with this whole line as it moved through Arkansas. So do take these warnings and make sure that you are taking cover. You are headed to the place that I was just talking about just the safest place you can be in your home there and we will do our best to let you know when the storm has the storm threat has passed you by as it has in Murray Kentucky and Prairie and also around Nobles and Paris you've still got some rain around but there are no warnings in effect for you now as the storm has moved beyond you at this point you're kind of on the back side of it there in per year, so the warning is just beyond you right now. Look how close this storm is to Dover. We want to dive back down here. Bumpus Mills, you're in the thick of it. 
So we had mentioned earlier about hoping you would make your way to your safe place there. Let's take a look at the latest rotation. There it is right now in our rotation detector. At midnight, we're seeing those greens and reds right there together, which shows us where the storm is rotating. And this would mean that's where the tornado, the funnel cloud would be. And in turn, if it makes contact with the ground, that's when we've got a tornado on our hands. And we have had reports of, looks like this is, is the, the real deal with this storm as it moves towards the east, kind of a northeast drift right now. It's just off to the north there of 79. It's north of you in Dover and right on top of you if you're in Bumpus, Bumpus Mills. So that means it's right there at Wall Hollow Road, Wyatt Hollow Road, Walker Ridge Road, Jordan Springs Road, and very close to you on Turner Road, too. If those ring a bell with you, if that's near where you live, make sure you, too, are in a safe place. All right, so let me, let me show you the latest path here with the storm as it moves on this track. Now remember, it's kind of a northeast drift right now, so that is taking it more northeastward to some of our folks up here um, across the state line. And we, we really thought that that would be the case with these storms tonight, this first batch to move through, that they would kind of take a beeline off to the north. But remember, this is a long line. It's just not one storm here. We've got more down the line. Fortunately, there have been no warnings with those. This will be near Garrettsburg at 1217, Herndon at 1217, Hopkinsville heads up there. 1223 is when we're expecting that storm to move towards you if you're in Hopkinsville. We've got a, a camera out of Hopkinsville, too, that we'll be checking on from time to time. Perhaps Stephanie can take a look at that. And we've had some really high winds out there, even outside of these storms. The winds have been so very high, I can actually give you an idea of how high the winds are. We'll switch back over to to one of our spots here where I've had the winds. I can go grab those for you as you check out those latest times. And as our uh, director gets those pictures ready, that's another really important indicator and a helpful tool here as we look at those storms blowing through and severity of the winds. Um, if we can go ahead and kind of run through a series of those cameras um, all throughout our area and really throughout this whole region. You know, Lisa, you mentioned that this is just the first of multiple storm systems coming through, which is why we are on such high alert tonight. Just because this is skirting or, or heading up, you know, toward the northwest or northeast, I guess, uh, north of us uh, that you had projected originally, you know, the night is young, right? Yes, it's definitely yeah. young. Is, um, where Look are we looking this. there, Stephanie? Dover. This is Brandon Dover. Smith. This is our crew in Dover right now. Um, and, you know, this is where you look at the human element again, uh, Lisa, and you know what it feels like when you're inside and you're hearing all of this outside. It's, it's very oh, yeah. scary. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Um, and you look at the pictures and, and you can imagine what those folks are literally hearing uh, there in that, in that area. And you may have noticed I had the winds up a second ago. Also, you add that to the winds that are howling out there tonight, and it really is very, very frightening. And for good reason here, as we look in on these storms, like we just keep in the radar up that they're, they're really dangerous storms tonight. Let's see if we've got an update for you. Um, got an update on our warning here. Um, tornado warning, yeah, there it is. A new one issued for Montgomery County and Northeastern Stewart County until 1230. And this is a confirmed large, extremely dangerous tornado right now, as we've been telling you, near Bumpus Mills and Big Rock moving east, northeast around 60 miles per hour. So the storm warning has been extended and the computer is coloring in that particular line exactly where that storm is. Let's get a, a storm track on this from the leading edge here. I want to take a look at that rotation right there again, and you can see it here. So that's likely where we're looking at that tornado. And we'll go there towards the east, but it really has been moving just a little bit north of due east. So our latest track for these new communities, uh, that's going to take it to Herndon, 1217, Oak Grove, 1222, Hopkinsville, 1222, and Pembroke at 1229 over to Trenton at 1233. So make sure you're in your safe place if you're in those areas. You've got just a few minutes to, to make that happen there. You can see around Hopkinsville at 1222. So, you know, just under 20 minutes to make sure you're picking that ideal spot. And hopefully you've done that ahead of time of where you should be uh, during a tornado. 
So get everybody together, get the family up and into that safe spot if you are in those communities. This is a very dangerous storm that we're talking about. You know, I mentioned to you our forewarned weather team was going to be here throughout the night. Dan Thomas has uh, just arrived and is going to be helping me track these storms as we go through the next little while here. And, you know, we, we talked about how far the storms are from different communities. I've tracked some of those storms. I know folks watching perhaps even in over in Springfield, over in Clarksville, in Nashville, wondering where we are in relationship to them. Well, this is what I wanted you to know, that this line extends much farther down to the west. So even though this part of the storm is lifting northeastward, that's good news, we still are expecting to see more activity before all is said and done. Let me show you over here. This is, um, is where we're tracking storms, not just one line, but more than one line coming out of Arkansas. So see we've got the first line to come through. Back behind that is a second line. So we've got several hours to go as this moves across the mid-state and you know it really impacts most folks here in Middle Tennessee. We'll take a look at our tornado warning uh, watch I should say here in just a second. But in terms of where this line is to us we can just give you an idea. We'll show you how how far away it is. So let me measure that for you. The line itself, just to show you where these are up here from Nashville, they're about 60 miles. I did this a little earlier and they were about 90 miles away. Looking to Clarksville, how far is this from you? Well, we can see it's about 23 miles away from Clarksville as it moves towards the east with a northeast drift right now. Tornado warnings in effect there for Stewart County. And that was in effect until 1215. Those warnings have been extended now to include also people who are in northern Montgomery, northeastern Stewart included in this now until 1230. So this storm very near Bumpus Mills and Big Rock and moving quickly beyond you and will continue to make its way uh, towards Fort Campbell and also right around the Clarksville area too. A dangerous storm that we're watching tonight. Let's go back to our debris detector and take a look at that and see what we see here. And let me switch over to another radar. Here's our reflectivity one more time. Now here's our debris detector. Let me switch this around a little bit. All right, there we go. There is a, actually a large signature on the south side there of um, Bumpus Mills. Let me switch back and see if we can find exactly what we're talking about here. There it is, right there. You see that? That is likely debris from a tornado that has been lifting up, lifted up inside that storm. So, you know, this is, we like to show you this because this is more of an indication that we, we do have something happening there on the ground and we're hoping that if you haven't already done so, that you're, you're making your way to the safest place that you can be. And this is going to be moving towards the northwest part of Fort Campbell, it looks like, on this path. There's Fort Campbell over there. So if we take the trajectory that we have right here and see about how far it is, we're talking about about 16 miles away, but let me let me do that a little differently because I just just shy of that. Let's do that one more time as the storm moves east northeast and there's Fort Campbell. So about 18 miles, a little more than initially estimated there. And so there's our debris detector where we look to see the possibility of more evidence of a tornado. All right, so we've got our original tornado warning expiring just a few moments for Stewart County as that storm is moving out of that particular area. And the new warning, of course, taking over until 1230. These are fast, fast moving storms. I want to find that once again, that, that circulation that we had a few moments ago. And we'll switch back over to our other radar. Let's see if we can pop that back on for you. There we go. See how quickly this is moving? It's just out of my frame of perspective there. All right, so this is, this is where we're looking at um, the rotation right now, moving off towards the east. So it's continuing to move quickly away from the Dover area, from Bumpus Mills, from Big Rock, and making a beeline, as we can see here, along that Tennessee and Kentucky line. Go out a little bit ahead of that and pull out a little bit more to get that 60 mile per hour 60 miles per hour speed, I should say. 
And that storm is going to be around Garrettsburg, 1219, Fort Campbell, 1223, over to Oak Grove at 1224, Pembroke at 1231, and Guthrie right around 1240. Around 1240. All right, let me put the reflectivity. I want to give some folks the all clear here. So if you're in your safe place, you can come on out now. And that does include folks in Dover. I think you are fine to come out. You still got some rain across the area, but it does look like the worst of this storm has passed you by. You can see it right through there. So see all that red and green is much farther off to the north. And uh, folks back here, per year, of course, we mentioned to you earlier that you are fine to come on out. And some of these other communities that are off to the west, Hamlin, Fort Hyman, New Concord, around the Mills subdivision, Cabana Estates, Liberty, Paris Landing. I think you're fine to come out right now. Um, you are out of that tornado warning at this point, the Cannon subdivision. So come on out of your safe spot. And Dover's just on the tail end of this whole system. You're still officially in, in the warned area right now for a few more minutes, but it looks like the threat of the storm has shifted much farther off towards the east right now. So hang in there with us. If you're in Bumpus Mills, the uh, storm has really passed you by at this point, but it is headed to folks there in Oak Grove over towards Fort Campbell and in Herndon. And, you know, it looks like it could stay south of you in Hopkinsville, but hey, you hang on there because we're going to keep you updated on this storm and how much closer it will get to you. But you are now um, under a tornado warning if you are in that area. At least it's just south of you, I should say, in Hopkinsville. Lisa, these communities that you're saying you're in the clear, you can come on out. Are, are they okay for, for an hour? Are they, okay, are they okay for the rest of the night? Or is this another moment-by-moment -moment basis knowing that these other storm systems, you know, these other waves are coming through? Absolutely. Great question. Yeah, I mean, you are okay for now because we're not quite done with the storms, the waves that are going to come through tonight. Um, so you're, you're okay to come out at this point, and we will certainly let you know if we do have another warning in your area that means you need to head back over to that safe spot again. But you're good to come out for just a few minutes here, and we'll keep tracking these storms. But uh, look at all that lightning. Where is that camera from? We're seeing. Uh, I think, Stephanie, you said this Katie's. is Clarksville. Okay, yeah. that's from Clarksville. Wow. So a lot of lightning there, and that's, you know, you can see that on the radar here. So here's Clarksville right over here. Let me circle that for you. Looking at Clarksville on the map, and then look at all this lightning right through here. Wow. Just in the window, I'm showing folks 124 lightning strikes is what we're seeing right now. So it's, it is quite a lightning show, and lightning in itself can be very dangerous too, so we don't want to uh, take that for granted with these storms tonight. They're very electrical and moving pretty quickly too, so it, they'll creep up on you. That That's, must be Katie's. Yep, yeah, Katie's. looking at Katie's there, all that lightning showing up there. And here's Katie's right up here. So you're seeing some right around you, and I know hearing more of that rumbling in the distance right now. One of those long nights for families when you've got the kids up and you're huddled into safe places and then you want to put them back in bed, but you just can't. Well, this is one of yeah. those evenings where we just have to stay super vigilant. Absolutely. I mean, it is it is a tough a tough night tonight. Um, one that you know most folks are not going to get much sleep tonight because even if you're not in the thick of the storm, you are hearing that rumbling, uh, no doubt, and that's enough to keep you awake tonight. Let's find that storm one more time. We've been highlighting it. And here it is, that center of circulation. This is now moving into part of the Fort Campbell community right through here. You can see the heart of Fort Campbell right through here. So it's getting closer and closer to you as it continues to move east, northeast right now. And we've got our latest storm track that we can do here. I like to keep updating these because it, this is so quick that it's moving. I mean, you know, it's just really making its way across Middle Tennessee much faster than we originally had estimated. At 1215 here, it's it's much farther along. Uh, still got that estimated arrival time to 1223 at Fort Campbell, Oak Grove at 1224, Pembroke at 1231, and Trenton um, also around 1234, Guthrie at 1234. 38 in Elkton at 1241 and it just shifted a little bit on us. Hey, we've got also got some reports of some hail over at Big Rock tonight. And you know, we had mentioned early on today that hail was a possibility with the storms and we're starting to see some of reports of that hail as well um, over in the Big Rock area. Got those reports. I want to pull out a little bit as a matter of fact and 
and take a look at some of our storm threats here. And let's see, that's actually some of the rainfall with the storm. Let's get an estimate. Let's see what that's representing here. They're pretty fast moving, so that's one of the reasons we're not expecting a lot of issues with flooding tonight. But that's a lot of rain in a short period of time. That's around uh, almost two and a half inches of rain right through there. All right, and here we're looking at hail potential and hail that has fallen, rather. And we mentioned around Big Rock area, they'd had some reports of some hail. But look at all this that's coming down right now. There is um, New Boston and around Como and right there around Tumbling. You may be seeing some of the hail there as well, not too far from Paris. So, you know, another concern, hail can be very dangerous. Um, certainly can do a lot of damage. Look at the wind estimates here that we're seeing on this storm. Near Bumpus Mills, we're talking 80 mile per hour winds there in that darker kind of yellow beige shade shaded area around 70 mile per hour winds in the red shaded area. So it's, you know, this is this is a really intense storm and that just gives you an idea of the winds that we're seeing with the storm right now too. As it's moving towards you, if you're in Herndon, you can see it right there on radar. Winds moving toward the radar site and away from the radar site, indicating some of that circulation that is taking place. So that's where our tornado is likely located at this point. So we're talking about Bennettstown as we get a little closer, Lafayette. And Love Lady Lane is one of the roads right there. Taylor Road, South Young Road. Also, we're seeing um, folks there around, let's see, Lafayette Road and Flat Lick Road is just past you by. Other community is Howell and looks like Palmyra Road. Storm's going to be crossing there before too much longer up near Herndon. As all this moves towards the east northeast now. And Dan, are you all mic'd up and ready to go? I think so. I think so. What a night. Yeah, it, incredible. Um, just fast moving storms. They've, you know, initially thought might be moving into the mid state around 1 a.m. and actually moving so quickly that they beat that and we started seeing the storms come in, gosh, around 11.30 or so, very yeah. fast. You know, this is a, the, the circumstance today is there's a, a couple of triggers that's getting these storms going. And um, for many of them, it has not been the cold front. Certainly the ones that we're seeing right now has nothing to do with the cold front, has to do with some cooling happening a couple miles above the ground. And so the question was all along, would, would we get a couple of rounds? Would we get one with a cold front and one that happens before that, or would we not? And so what we're seeing happen right now is we're getting more than one round in northwestern parts of the mid-state because they'll get more as the cold front comes in later on. These are precursor cells, and these are the most dangerous ones because they're out ahead of the, uh, the leading line that's going to come in later on. The cold front is still back in Missouri in the state of Arkansas. You can see back toward Paragould and uh, just south of St. Louis, just west of Evansville. That's another little line coming in likely with the surface boundary, that cold front. Um, so it's, it's going to be a busy, busy long night. Yeah. Um, good chance that southeastern parts of the mid-state only see one route as the, um, the dynamics, the, the energy in the atmosphere is a little different tonight in Missouri, in Illinois, in Arkansas than it is in southeastern parts of the mid-state. But easily Nashville so could see a couple of rounds down toward Murfreesboro and uh, Manchester, Waverly, uh, Clarksville, a couple rounds. All right, Dan, we're starting to get some of these damage reports in. Um, looks like over in Stewart County, the EMA there is telling us that they're responding to a collapsed house there on Walker Ridge Road. So on Walker Ridge Road, um, a collapsed house there. So it's, you know, it, this is not surprising from what we're looking at here on radar tonight as that storm is moving right now through Stewart County, moved through Henderson County, uh, excuse me, Henry County a little earlier, and now we're looking at in Stewart County. So uh, responding to a collapsed house on Walker Ridge Road there. That's a report from the EMA. We do have a new, uh, looks like <coughs> severe thunderstorm warning that has been issued for Montgomery County right now. Yep, till one o'clock. So that's the main body of that storm. And that's going to produce a lot of damaging wind. I was coming to the station 15 minutes ago, Lisa, 
and the wind was very different from what it was for most of today. The wind was eh, not too bad today, occasionally gusty, but now we're starting to get a lot more activity out there. And so any of the storms, as you have that sinking air because of the rain and maybe some hail with some of these, um, will bring some of the higher wind energy about a mile above the ground down to the ground. And it's just, it's just remarkable how much wind can be produced by just a little thunderstorm, which you know, most of the time, these don't get nasty, but tonight the stage is set for a lot of rough and potentially damaging weather. And so most of Montgomery County in that. So if you're watching from Dotsonville and Palmyra, Carlisle, um, Clarksville, Sango, severe thunderstorm warning. So just stay away from windows, stay uh, in your home, not a time to venture out and try to move the car. Um, and, and stay aware because sometimes on the leading edge of these gust fronts, we call them, you can get little tornado spin-ups that are quick, uh, last a minute or two, but still do tremendous damage. And so we'll have to monitor for that. So it's possible within some of these severe thunderstorm warnings later on, we get some tornado warnings issued uh, because of that fact right there. And you know, it's, it's good to note to folks that it looks like this severe thunderstorm warning is really replacing one part of this whole um, scenario here that we had a couple of tornado warnings and so now we've got this severe thunderstorm warning that was issued but still a tornado warning a little farther off toward the north there so let's let's get a look at that the area that's still under that tornado warning right now um, and that's just a little bit farther off to the north uh, folks there we, we're still on let's see what's... we're back on links okay back on links all righty so we are looking at well, let's see if I can get it to click on it. And that, that one is in effect until, I believe, 1230, as I recall. The tornado warning that you see here from Hopkinsville, Herndon, um, does include Oak Grove and Fort Campbell until 1230. And then the one that we see a little farther down to the south, that's our severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 1 a.m. So does just give you a little clarification on what, what is what as we look at our, our radar here. Um, anytime though you see a little bow in the uh, leading edge like we're seeing right through here, that shows us there are some very windy conditions out ahead of that whole system. So uh, we, are, we are looking at, at wind associated with the thunderstorm, but also wind um, that has been generated from a really tight pressure gradient tonight as well. So it's windy even outside of these thunderstorms, and that's the reason for the wind advisory that was issued um, a little bit earlier and actually goes all the way till noon tomorrow. We're looking at uh, Clarksville tonight and some of the lightning that we see there. We've got plenty of it showing up on our radar, no doubt about that, as the storm is moving to the northeast. Could we take links on the link source just for a minute? I've got to get onto this computer real quickly. So links from the link source. All right, can we do that, Stephanie? Thank okay. You. Just switching over there, doing a little a computer switching so we can show you a little bit more as Dan is joining us this evening to help us, or this overnight hour now, to help us get a little bit more information on these storms as they're moving towards the east. So this one right now is in Pembroke. So we want to find out where that center of rotation, that center of circulation is located again. And we find it here um, as we zoom down a little bit. You can see how close it is to Pembroke and how close it is to Oak Grove right now. Moving towards the east, northeast. So our rotation looking um, pretty broad here as it, as it moves on. Let's see if we can get um, a latest, latest storm track for you. The storm moving east with that northeast drift, as I've been mentioning, just moving very quickly too. And that's taking it to Trenton at 1233, over to Elkton, 1240, Whippoorwill at 1248, and to Cave Springs around 1251. So if you're in those areas, make sure that you are headed over to your safe spot. Let's show you some of the, the spots where exactly this is. Around St. Elmo, between there and Masonville is where this rotation is. And is it Fidelio? Um, Right there is really in the center of that rotation. Bardwell Lane, Pruitt Road, Elmo Road will be areas that this will cross. And then right there along Highway 115 and headed towards Anderson Lane. So if those are familiar to you, it's going to be crossing also Highway 41 as it continues on this path, this journey that's taking it from Middle Tennessee into Kentucky tonight. 
I want you to hang on there with us with um, being in your safe spot there because uh, these storms are looking pretty uh, pretty nasty tonight to say the very, very least. Very dangerous situation, not only from the storms themselves, but look at this. Look at all the rain coming down, but also from the lightning, too, that we're seeing with these storms. All right, let's check this latest um, warning situation. The tornado warning canceled for Montgomery and Stewart County, as we mentioned to you a little while ago, replaced with this severe thunderstorm warning. So folks down here in Clarksville, let's take a look at what you are dealing with right now with this storm as it moves towards the Clarksville area. And we'll put this back into motion. We've got folks in Woodlawn, in Dodsonville, in, just in line to see some of this heavy rain and also these high winds as it moves towards the east right now. We'll stop that radar and show you a storm track on that for folks who are in the path of this. No tornado warning, but uh, we are looking at a severe thunderstorm warning. I'm going to scoot that back over here for us and show you where we are with this. As it moves towards the east-northeast, we'll get that. I'm going to do it this way, where you can see that whole line moving off towards the east, about 60 miles an hour. That's going to take it uh, over to uh, West Creek High School around 1230, just a few minutes from now. Cave Spring at 12:30 and around Hermitage Estates at 12:30 over to Northwest High School around 12:30. And if you're in the Kenwood High School area, 12:33, and Boyd Acres, 12:33. If you are in these areas, you're not under tornado warning, but you are under severe thunderstorm warning. These winds are going to be really strong as they pass over you, and you're going to see some lightning with this. Going to get a lot of rain too. The good news is we think it's moving fast enough that we're not going to see any flooding problems, but you may see some heavy downpours as it moves on by. Got a report out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, that um, we'll move on up this line that we had a 60 knot wind gust there, so near a 60 mile per hour wind gust, 69 actually, so near 70 miles per hour over in the Hopkinsville area with the winds moving through there. So that gives you an idea, even if you are not in the midst of a tornado. You can have winds that are high enough to do some damage. We're talking about bringing down some small trees, doing some roof damage as well. And our tornado warning remaining in effect right through here, impacting folks there in Pembroke right now. If you're in Pembroke, we want you to be sure that you are in your safest spot possible. You can see that rotation is just right there upon you. So where's that going to be? Well, you're going to head to the lowest level of your home. Basements are great. You can also get into a closet or a bathroom as long as you're away from windows. That's, you know, that's really key. We want you to be away from windows. You can bring the pillows, the blankets in there, grab a helmet. We give you, trying to give you enough time to grab a few things or hopefully you're prepared with that. That does help you, help protect you from flying debris. This is coming across Highway 115, Anderson, Mason, Howard Dixon, uh, Dickerson Road. Some of the landmarks there, some of the roads that you may recognize as the storm is moving east. Over to Highway 41, too. So these are your early warnings if you're in Trenton. If you know someone in the Trenton community, you might want to give them a call up towards Elkton as well. Let them know that there's a really dangerous storm that's headed their way, and you want to make sure they're aware of it. And, you know, even farther down the line, folks in Russellville in line to see this storm coming through as well. We can go back to max one. All right. So, Stephanie, did you get that little note back to our other computer? All right. Thank you. Let's get that big view again so folks at home can see exactly what's going on there. And the storm system moving towards the northeast. East, the whole line is moving eastward, and these individual storms tend to be going towards the northeast. So folks here in Franklin, Kentucky, in Hendersonville, in Nashville, in Columbia, it's going to be a little slower getting to you. As a matter of fact, right now on the southern end of this, we've got some cells that have shown a little bit of sign of weakening right over here. Let me switch over to our Memphis radar. We'll be a little bit closer to you there so we can see what is on the other side. All right, so they've weakened a little bit. We don't see all those warnings, but still a pretty potent line as it moves through. So just didn't want you to think you weren't going to see anything here in the southwest because there is there's something falling. We just have to be close enough to it, and we can do that with that Memphis radar there. 
But we back over to our real-time radar, the only real-time radar here in Middle Tennessee, giving us the most up-to-date image. And you see it there with just a few showers right here around Columbia. Dive down, get a view of that. Moving across 65, nothing to write home about there. But you are getting a little bit of rain. No lightning showing up there at all. No doubt the worst of the activity is right up here along that Tennessee and Kentucky line from Hopkinsville um, all the way back down towards Dover, where we've had some really high winds there reported and all moving towards the east northeast. Back behind that, even though we don't have a warning, we've got another round of heavy rain that has been moving through Stewart, um, Henry County, I should say, right there along 79. Per you, you've seen some of it. You've had some more of that um, close to Paris and back down to Henry in Henry County. Big Sandy is in line to get a little bit of rain as well, uh, moving through pretty shortly with the storm moving towards the east. But the two warnings that we have in effect right now, we can find one of those, this severe thunderstorm warning right here, including parts of Stewart County and also parts of Montgomery County. And that's going to remain in effect until 1 a.m. We'll get that to pop up there for you. Until 1 o'clock in the morning, this severe thunderstorm warning that uh, will have an impact on Clarksville. You're included in that warning as the storm moves towards the northeast. Let's get back over here and check out our tornado warning. And tornado warning will continue in effect for a little while longer until 1 a.m. as well. And there's the leading edge of that storm headed towards Elkton, headed towards uh, folks there who are in Trenton. And switching back over here, see that uh, rotation. Definitely a little broader rotation than we had a little earlier with our rotation detector here. Sometimes can show us um, some weakening. Let's see, taking a look at um, some of the information here from the National Weather Service. Check in on that real quick. See if we've got anything new to share with you. Did have some reports, though, a little earlier of some hail with this storm tonight. We haven't seen um, a lot of hail or haven't had really many reports other than the one out of Big Rock. And then we had, of course, that report from the Stewart County EMA of a collapsed house on Walter Ridge Road. So that's a, another, another report we had with this system. All right, checking out the rotation and seeing some of the roads that are right there where we could see some rotation taking place, some circulation with that storm, which could mean you could see a funnel cloud or perhaps even a, a tornado dropping down. You are in the tornado warned area around Mayton Road and over to Trees Shop Road, right there around Highway 41. Trenton, you're in line to see that as well, Old Trenton Road. One of the roads that the storm will be crossing over. Same goes for Davis Mills Road, too, as the storm shifts off to the east, northeast right now. And continues towards the Elkton area. We've got northeast movement around 60 miles an hour with this storm. And out ahead of this, there's one warning. It's really two warnings we're seeing here. That one in effect until one. The other expires at 1245 which includes the Pembroke area. But this storm is moving on and headed towards Elkton right now. So let's get the latest storm track out ahead of this. Let's do one this way with a little bit broader area. So show you a little bit more about who may be in line to see some of that activity. So that's going to be folks that are in Whippoorwill around 1245, Cave Springs around 1249, Russellville at 1252. So you definitely need to be in your safe spot if you're in those areas. Put the reflectivity showing the rain back on. And look at all that lightning, 73 strikes. You know, it's always a good time to remind you, too, when you see all this rain like this. Uh, do keep in mind that you don't want to go out and try to see the actual funnel cloud, see the tornado, because it's going to be wrapped in rain, and you're not going to be able to get a good view of that. So we don't want you wasting time. We don't want, to put your, want you to put yourself in danger doing that. So just... Heed these warnings and stay inside, stay in your safe place until this storm passes you by. Going to get a look at uh, some of the rainfall totals with the storm. 
and this yellow shaded area up here and also off to the west in Henry County, that's representing over two inches of rain. So no massive amounts of rain that we're seeing with these storms tonight. But we can take a look at this, and this is what we call our shear swath. So what that is showing us is that's showing us the path that the rotation has taken. And look at it all the way, all the way across as we tracked it coming in. See how far back that goes as we tracked it coming in from the Mississippi River all the way across the Tennessee River and now moving into Kentucky. So that's, that just shows you uh, what we've had in terms of rotation taking a place and holding together for a long time. And here's the hail swath. So, you know, we, we have had the potential for hail in this area. You can see where we had some smaller size hail. And of course, I mentioned Big Rock was one of those locations. Let's see, we've got a new report here. So if we can share this with you. Um, thunderstorm report. 61 mile per hour winds was reported at the Clarksville Outlaw Field. And they had a peak gust there, 61. Wow, so really strong winds. And the threshold for a severe thunderstorm warning is a 60 mile per hour wind or greater. And so that certainly fits the criteria for that as that storm is getting ever so close to you there in the Clarksville area. Let's see. Other information I can share with you right now. All right, so just looking at, at who's, who's in line to see this storm move through, and it's really on top of you right now in Elkton and getting closer over to Russellville as well with that tornado warning remaining in effect through Elkton, and we'll have to see if it's going to be extended into Russellville or if that will become a severe thunderstorm warning. So uh, that's one of the potential areas is down the line. So heads up folks there in Russellville. The storm is headed your way with some very high winds. And also we're looking at a lot of lightning with the storm too. Around 81 lightning strikes showing up in the window that you see here as the storm advances on towards the east right now. Look at this, it stretches all the way back. Uh, still that heavy rain down through Fort Campbell and extending all the way through here to around the Clarksville area, just north of Clarksville. And look at this line, this next line coming through. So we've got more to come. And it now is starting to move over some of the same spots that have already been impacted. There's um, Katie's, and then we see right down here, land between the lakes. You've got another round of rain coming in there. Perrier, you're getting it. Nobles, you've got some more rain coming in to around the Paris area, straight down 69. And over to Henry and Gleason, we've got plenty of rain coming in there as well with this storm as it tracks on towards the east. Go back up here to our tornado warning. We don't want to stay away from that too long. Looks like we have had an extension. I was mentioning we'd have to see if it was going to include Russellville. And new tor tornado warning has been extended until 1:15, as we've got this storm likely producing um, a tornado coming through Elkton and now headed towards the Russellville area. We'll take a look at that. And there you go with that rotation. Get some timing on this storm as it moves towards Russellville. Let's stop that rotation for you and we'll go from there and get a storm track. All right, about 60 mile per hour, um, 60 mile an hour, that's how quickly it's moving. And that's going to be headed over to Elkton. Well, it's really upon you in Elkton now, but Russellville was the community I was looking for around 1256. It'll be in your general area, around 1256 for folks there in Russellville. How's the, how's the Hopkinsville radar look on that? Hopkinsville radar. Well, let's turn it over there and take a look. This, this thing is not far from the Hopkinsville well, radar. Well, that's true. That is a very good point. And there's your reflectivity. And there it is right there. Gotcha. So putting it there into um, Elkton right now. That's high top. Yes. Oh, did I hit the wrong one? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's 12:41 in the morning. It is, and I've been <laughs> talking nonstop for. <laughs> they both start with an H. That's right. Um, so, there we go. So Look there it that. is. There's so the reflectivity. Passed. Yeah, just past the radar. So it should be a pretty good, pretty good view. Not really picking up on the reflectivity. It's so close to the radar. Kind of in that cone of silence right there. Where we can't, we can't see too much. Yeah. Um, around Trenton for sure, but close to Elkton. 
and there's a the reflectivity one more time. Always try to look at the closest <coughs> radar site just because we are, you know, you want to you want to get the the, clo the closest image because the farther out, if you think about the radar, the farther away from the radar you get, you're not looking at the closest part to the ground because the earth curves. So you start looking at the tops of the storms if you get really far away from the radar. That's why it's always a good idea to use the one that's closest. And there is uh, what we're checking out there. So we, so we now have confirmed structural damage right. in Pembroke. And per year, sounds like it's in pretty tough shape. Uh, Dresden, Tennessee, and Weekly County. Sounds like it was hit very hard. And so this thing continues to chug along right to the heart of Logan County. The, the, the weather service is almost nonstop issuing these tornado warnings. So next in line, Russellville, and then next in line after that, Bowling Green. So yeah. in the heart of Warren County. And I don't know where this storm originated because it originated when I was still asleep, <laughs> but this may be one of those long track supercells that's on the ground for more than 100 miles. You know, the tornado on the ground for more than 100 miles. Um, we don't know. It has been, it has been a long time. Um, you know, the, we've been tracking these storms, you know, the storms since they moved out of Arkansas, but in terms of where that tornado originated to start with, um, the first warning that we had, uh, first hint of it was um, when it was, you know, much, much farther to the west over here around Martin, Tennessee, um, around Sharon. And that's one of the first reports that we had of that, this particular one. So it's, it's been a while that we've been tracking this and we've had numerous tornado warnings since it was over in Martin. Uh, well, just nor well, very close to Martin. Sharon was the actual community where we had that first, that first indication of this tornado. And look at it now, still, still getting warnings along with it. And you know, they're fast, fast moving. So we keep getting these warnings really quickly. You know, the, the, and if you want to just take a break or if you want to step to the wall, it's up to you. I know you've uh, been doing this for a long time. The thing with, you know, I, I had, I was on TV Thursday at 4 o'clock and we were talking about, you know, what makes this outbreak different and special. And the fact is that we have not just strong wind, but I called it extreme wind in the atmosphere, all levels. And so as soon as you get in this environment a thunderstorm to develop, and it's going to have a strong updraft because it's being fed by a strong south wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to rotate quickly, and it has a likelihood of producing not just a tornado, but a strong and wide and a long-lived tornado. And so we've got a history of that already back to the west and the Midwest tonight. Potentially, this storm in northwestern parts of the midstate now in southwest Kentucky doing the same thing. And we could have additional long-track tornado producing thunderstorms over the next several hours. So this is why we said for several days, you've got to have a plan. Now, if you're waking up, maybe you're, you're saying, hey, these storms are coming my way later tonight. I'm in the heart of Middle Tennessee and you see our coverage right now and you don't have your safe place ready to roll. This is the time to get up. I know you're in the middle of your sleep and maybe you're just laying there looking at your phone or listening to us uh, on the television, but this is the time to get up and set the table, so to speak, for that safe place. So you wanna make sure you pick, as we've said a number of times in the past. In fact, we have a little uh, graphic that we can uh, pull up here. I'm gonna try to do that in just a moment. And essentially, good, thank you. Essentially, you wanna choose a room that's at the lowest level of your house. If you have a basement, that's gonna be best. If you don't, um, then it's going to be a small first floor interior room like a bathroom or a closet. Typically those two win as the choice because a lot of times they don't have windows. You don't want a, a room if you can avoid it on an outside wall and you certainly don't want one with windows because you're more vulnerable in that sense. But if you have an interior bathroom or closet, put as many walls between you and the outdoors as possible. So first you choose your spot and then secondly you're going to make sure that you're going to be protected once you're there. So most people these days, if you have children, you've got bicycles for the kids, they have bike helmets, and maybe you like to exercise and bike, you have a bike helmet as well. A lot of people who are, who are um, interested in fitness and like to bicycle have those helmets in the garage or have the helmet somewhere in the house. Put those in your safe place now. If anyone in the house likes to ride a motorcycle or a dirt bike or an ATV, that's even better. Those helmets are even more protective. The full frontal motorcycle helmet is going to give you the, the best head protection. And so you want to use that to protect your head. So line those up there now. Pillows and blankets, just throw a bunch, a bunch in there because you want to wrap your whole body 
when you get to your safe spot during a tornado warning uh, from flying debris. Protect yourself from flying debris. That's the number one concern we all or most of us remember or heard of um, the Wizard of Oz movie. That's not the threat. Flying through the air, you know, however long distance um, the movie had that happen, that's not a concern. More of a concern is things blowing around and uh, actually hitting your body. So if you protect your head, you protect your body from flying debris, you find that great safe spot, you're in all likelihood going to be good to go. Now, what else do you need there? Well, if you have an extra power cord, charging cord, um, put it in there just in case you're zooming to that um, safe spot later on tonight. You have your device with you, but you forget the charging cord because that could run out of battery pretty quickly if you're watching a stream right now on the News 4 app. And, and, and as soon as I get out of the driveway this morning before I roll to work, I pulled up the News 4 app and verified that we are streaming, and we are, and so you can get us that way if you have a trouble or difficulty getting us to stream. You can't find a little button on your app, um, on the News 4 app that lets you stream. Power cycle your phone. That's the first step. And if that doesn't work, power cycling your phone doesn't help, then go to the App Store and look for an update to the app. One of those two things will work, and then at the top you'll see a long skinny bar, and it says uh, watch live now, and you'll be able to take us with you to your safe spot. So um, that's essentially the, pre the precautions you need to take now, because once we have, as Lisa's mentioned a, a number of times tonight, once we have a tornado warning for your area, because these cells are moving so quickly, you just will not have time to, to start fiddling around with preparation. It's too late then. All right, look at this signature here. So the Weather Service is, um, is looking at things uh, just as we are here at News 4, and they continue to send out little tidbits of information, and they've been talking tonight incessantly about the magnitude of the winds. The rotation in, now this is probably a mile above the ground, but it, it really doesn't mi matter. It's, it's 3,000 feet above the ground. Rotation with this is 181 miles an hour. That's unbelievable, and it's very, very tight. Around Gordonsville, around Whippoorwill, we've mentioned Whippoorwill a lot in our severe weather coverage in the past. And I'm gonna do a distance track. It's about a mile across, um, not per se a tornado, but that rotation that I just uh, talked about. We don't know how wide this thing is right now. We could only uh, guess, and so we're not even gonna do that but it's, it's coming right toward Russellville. Let's go back in time. I'm gonna jog this area. This is the area of greatest concern right here, back, and we'll see how close to downtown Russellville this is gonna come. Russellville, uh, I implore you, you've gotta be your safe spot uh, immediately. Now it looks to me, and I'm backing this up, and I'm gonna show where it was before. It looks to me like the worst part of this is going to pass probably on the north side of Russellville and uh, safely away from the south side. But you're still in the heart of that tornado warning in Russellville on the south side, so you've got to be in your safe spot. But we're going to be really focused on Danby, Epley's, Cooperstown. Right now, the circulation's at Highland Lick Road. Now, remember, this is a snapshot. This is not a moving picture. It says 1248 on the screen, so we just got a new picture. But these, these images come in every couple minutes. And so it's sort of like taking a picture of a speeding car down the highway. So you can rest assured if it's moving at 55 miles an hour, it's not here anymore. It's somewhere up in here, something like that. It is cruising along at, um, at highway speeds tonight. Some of the roads here, so coming out of the north side of Russellville, uh, there's a Lewisburg Road. Let's see if we can get this road, this double, um, for whatever reason, it's not populating a street name, but it's right near Stewart Smotherman Road. There's Lewisburg Road. There's Five Oaks Lane, Sportsman Club Lane, Highland Lane, Highland Lick Road. Right around Highland Lick Road right now. And then Cooperstown Road, uh, Cooperstown Road. There's a little S in there. Um, so right now in the north central part of Logan County. Let's put this in motion again. Likely a large and extremely dangerous and probably extremely violent tornado in progress just north of downtown Russellville right now. On its way to Warren County, this is your fair warning, Warren County, um, you are next in line for this. Let's reset for a moment. You're watching News 4, time now 1249. 
We have team coverage right now. We've got a whole bunch of photographers in the field. We've got a bunch of people at the digital desk. We have producers, we have directors, we have two meteorologists, soon to be three in about 10 minutes. And we're not gonna leave you until the storm is over, folks. That's Mayfield, Kentucky, Dan. Just devastation there earlier. Look at this courthouse. So sad that the damage that happened to that a little earlier today. Wow. And um, we're also looking here to the right. Stephanie, what is this view here? That's Mayfield as well. So damage to the courthouse. And then, of course, they're assessing um, what is going on there as well. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of mangled um, metal there. So that does look like uh, a lot of devastation with that tornado. Oh, there it is. There's, you saw the before and the after of the courthouse. Just terrible tonight when that first round of storms, when we first started seeing them really become active. And there's the result of that, the damage that we're seeing there to that courthouse. So um, really sad situation tonight. And we're not done because we're looking at still plenty of tornadoes showing up here uh, with the, these warnings that are in effect. Dan's showing you where Mayfield, Kentucky is right now and uh, we'll take a, a look at some of these warnings that are now out ahead of this so we've got mayfield here and all this has shifted farther off to the east at this point so we're checking out russellville where our tornado warning is dan was telling you about that just on top of you really dangerous situation because when you've been tracking a storm this long that has had one tornado warning after another you know that uh, this is holding together we've been seeing the signs of that and so we we're hoping that you're with us here in russellville taking those precautions and making sure that you are in your safe spot right now. Auburn is going to be next in line to see this active weather as the storm continues to track off towards the northeast right now. A lot of lightning with this. We're talking uh, as many as 106 just in this window that we're displaying here. And look at all this heavy rain with this storm too. And I know that the curiosity a lot of times is, oh, we've got a tornado warning. Let me go outside and look at what's going on. We don't want you to do that because this storm is going to be wrapped in rain and it's also producing incredible winds. Dan is clicking on some of these 100 mile per hour winds with this storm, near 80 mile per hour winds here. So really a, a strong, intense storm tonight that is tracking off towards the east northeast. And you can see Russellville is in the thick of it because likely where he's showing that right now has shifted off to the east just a little bit because I was explaining a little earlier about how when the radar goes around and does its assessment, it takes it a little bit before it shows us exactly where that wind is. And so it's usually shifted off just a little bit. But right here is where we're seeing the winds headed towards the radar site, away from the radar site. So if you've got them making that circle like that. That's why we say that's our rotation to director detector because that's showing us where the winds are twisting in that storm and that's likely where that tornado is. And then we take a look. Well, how fast is it moving? So you've got 98, 85. So pretty potent storm equaling that near 100 mile per hour wind we were seeing there just a second ago with this storm moving off towards the east northeast. There's Darby right now. And you can see where that is in relationship to Russellville, about four miles away from that is where we're seeing those intense will winds right now with the storm moving across some of the roads that you see here. Uh, I should say Danby, that is Cooperstown and also over to US 68 bypass, eventually making its way towards Concord Road uh, as it shifts on towards the east northeast right now. So just an incredibly dangerous storm that's going to be moving from Russellville over towards the Auburn community as well. And Dan's kind of going down the line here, uh, taking a look at some of the winds associated with this and the strength of those winds as this storm is rotating right now and is likely producing a tornado as we have seen some of the damage already. have had reports of that damage as it moved from Dresden and continued to move, well, from the Sharon community initially and then into Sharon, um, into Dresden, um, and then continuing to lift off towards the northeast where we see it right now around the Russellville area. Also showing some of the, uh, the rotation taking place here as we've switched over to another one of our radar products that can generate to show you uh, where we've seen some of that circulation happening with the storm as it's lifting off towards the northeast right now. Dan? All right, Lisa. And so this is, this is that other rotation detector. And so you and I have tracked so many storms together using this product. And so typically when we have a 
tornado warning. Um, and if it's not a, an extremely dangerous, uh, large, violent tornado, we'll have little blobs of red. But look at how large these red blobs are tonight. And then this is the history of that. It's called the shear rotation path. And it's just really remarkable how this storm has had such long-lived blobs of red indicating how significant the rotation has been. And notice the trend, the last little bit here. It looks like the trend is for some of these little areas of rotation to strengthen. So mm -hmm. over Todd County, over Logan County, we're seeing that. Let's dive back down, get a current position. As you remarked on just a moment ago, the lightning tonight is just phenomenal. And then within the red, we've got one of those pockets of yellow. So again, just speaking to the strength of the storms tonight that we're dealing with, now moving on the north side of Russellville. Looks like we have another uh, rotation uh, detector um, uh, scan for you. And so let's check out these winds again. Rotation, 120 inbound. I don't think I've seen a 120 inbound um, yet today. And then the outbound about 56. Unbelievable. Th these are numbers that you would see if you were tracking storms in Oklahoma or in Kansas or back in Texas. Um, they just have very uh, large, violent tornadoes. This is very likely still on the ground. Um, let me make this better for Lisa. She's over in a different position, position so she can see what's going on here. Um, and now it's on the north side of Russellville. So just north of downtown, right over Cooperstown right over Cooperstown. I hope that everybody in Cooperstown is in their safe spot. We do want to give the all clear to Todd County. All clear, of course, for Christian. And we still have that severe thunderstorm morning until one o'clock for four minutes, three minutes for Northern Montgomery County. Just to remind you about that storm real quickly. Um, it looks like it's, it's moved out. It's fizzled and moved out. And these are not warned on, but we're gonna have to watch all these back to the west. Any of these could start to rotate around Paris on the north side of Dover, west of Paris. And then this is a tornado warning we've been tracking for a little bit until one o'clock. We'll see if it's reissued by the folks in Memphis at the National Weather Service as it approaches Jackson in Madison County. But this is the most dangerous storm in the area still. And it's just continuing to move along. And it looks like to me, based on even the reflectivity signature we're getting off a of full worn real-time radar, that it's right in through here. We, we have to pull up the rotation and then let's go back to debris detector. Oh, and bullseye. See. Look at that. Oh, wow. So, and I know that the, the weather services said that they've had debris lofted to 16,000 feet tonight. Uh, so that's almost three miles up in the air. Wow. They've seen that. Um, what, what we're looking at, you know, for Lisa and me, this is, this is uh, easy to decipher, but what we're looking for is the peak rotation when we're trying to see if this is real debris and the peak rotations right around here to match up with a cool blob on rotation detector. And that's what we see tonight. It's, it's very apparent and it matches up perfectly with the rotation. So there, there has to be a large and extremely violent tornado on the ground now just north of Russellville um, in north central sections of Logan County. Looks like a new severe thunderstorm warning has been issued. So let's check on that. Lisa, what do you see with this? Yeah, I've got a new severe thunderstorm warning with that storm that uh, is now over in Jackson and headed into Madison County right now. So this is the one we've been tracking coming out of Memphis and continuing to move, as you see here, off to the northeast on this track that's taking it right along I-40. And with this, we're looking at, once again, some very intense winds as this storm races along. We're talking near 60 mile per hour winds, which, you know, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a severe thunderstorm warning. But we're talking about winds that can be strong enough to knock down small trees, do roof damage. So it, oftentimes, these severe storms can get so intense that they can do as much damage as a weak tornado. So we don't want to take this for granted. And we really want to watch this storm because, you know what, even though that is just out of our viewing area, we are going to see it continue to move and get closer and closer to us here in Middle Tennessee. And we've got folks over here um, that are in the Lexington area that watch us. So we know that as it moves towards Wildersville, that will also be starting to move into our viewing area. Medina is uh, one of those spots where it's going to be as it continues to hold together. It'll head over to Medina right around 117 in the morning. And on that path, it's going to take it right there, uh, continuing to move into Henderson County and right on up to eventually across the Tennessee River. And it looks like it could make its way into um, 
maybe around Humphreys County into Waverly as well. And looks as though we've got a new tornado warning that has been issued. And Dan, this is just what we were talking about a second ago. This is just one in a series of tornado warnings with this storm right around Russellville. And you know, Dan was showing us the rotation, actually the debris detector a second ago. All throughout the night, as spotting along, I've been showing you these different rotation debris detectors, both together, actually. And you can see that is a continuation of this trend with this tornado warning being issued to take even in Bowling Green and all the way up into the Brownsville area. The good news with this, though, it is moving out of our viewing area, which um, we will certainly hope that many of our viewers around here in Russellville and back over to Elkton can sigh, get a sigh of relief as this storm continues to move on out and shift off towards the northeast. And I'm sure we can dive down here and, and get a bit of a storm track on that and give some folks some ideas. And if you've got friends over in Bowling Green, Maybe they're asleep. You might want to give them a heads up. That storm is going to be headed into their neck of the woods very, very soon. Want to make sure they're in their safe place tonight. Same goes for folks over here in Greencastle as well, as this is moving in their general direction too, with that potential of once again that tornado being on the ground. And we've seen so much evidence of that. Here is that rotation direct uh, detector, rather, and we've got the storm track with it, showing it going over to Bowling Green at 121 into Plum Springs right around 125. So those um, communities are going to be aligned to see that next, and we're at 1 o'clock. So less than 20 minutes, but enough time for them to, uh, for you, if you're out ahead of the storm, and for folks up there in Bowling Green, to go on and head to their safe spot. And that, of course, I know we repeat this over and over, but we know we've got folks coming in and out here watching us. That safe spot is going to be in the center of your home, on the lowest level, a basement if you have it. And if you're in your basement, a sturdy piece of furniture is always good to put um, over you. And in my house, I always like to head down the stairwell and go underneath the stairwell. That is also another good place to be. So the key here is you want to be on the lowest interior room and protect your head from flying debris. That's how more people are hurt than anything else when it comes to tornadoes. Those pillows, those blankets, and a motorcycle helmet, actually the best protection. But if you've got a sports helmet there of any kind, that all also works. And you know, this is one point we want to make. If you live in a mobile home, if you've got friends in the path of this storm that live in a mobile home, please have them to go to a safer spot. It's just not safe to stay in a mobile home. Here's that uh, rotation detector once again. So we've got this area, we've got this area. So two are watching with this storm already now in the Auburn community there and moving on towards the northeast right now. And then another little farther up as we see here. So we're tracking this first one to see exactly where that's going to be headed. That's one just making a beeline for Bowling Green around 125, continuing over to Plum Springs just shortly thereafter. And then as we look a little bit farther down to the south, we'll pick up a couple of other communities here. Um, of course, it's right upon you in Auburn at 105 and then Oakland right around 133. So if you're in those areas, please make sure that you are in the safest spot that you can possibly be right now. Uh, so we, we want to be giving you the all clear before too much longer as the storm tracks very quickly. These are moving about 60 miles per hour. Dan? Yeah, it looks like this is actually going to roll potentially right over, um, over Bowling Green. I want to pull this rotation detector up again and we'll watch the history. Let's go back. I'm going to pause this and we'll go back and see if we can draw some lines. So as Lisa just identified, we've got two areas that could be producing tornadoes at this moment. Uh, the northern one, probably the more intense, another one right over Auburn. And we'll back it up about 30 minutes ago. Again, we're watching, if you're watching us on News 4, folks, we're watching full one real-time radar as tornado-producing thunderstorms approach Bowling Green in south-central Kentucky. And so you can see, I'm going to connect the dots here, I'm doing my best. It looks like they're both moving along those radials. And so, you know, God willing, this thing splits Bowling Green to the north and south. We are going to have to watch this thing um, very carefully in just the next little while as this continues to evolve. There's full one real-time radar, two areas of rotation, potentially two tornadoes in progress in the same county right now, separated by eight miles. That's how intense the influence of these storms are tonight. That's how intense the wind is at all levels of the atmosphere. It's not just a little bit of the atmosphere. All levels of the atmosphere is what we're seeing feed these storms. 
um, near Yoder Tipton at Waterford. We got a tornado touchdown. I don't know exactly where that is in Kentucky, but we just got a report of that. Um, so if you know where that is, Yoder Tipton at Waterford, I guess it's the, inter the, ex the interchange of a couple of roads. Um, heads up there, looks like it has been confirmed to touch down. Forward real-time radar shows we have the tornado warnings for Logan and Warren counties in Kentucky. We have severe thunderstorm warnings in West Tennessee, including Jackson and just uh, on the east side of the Memphis area. What I want to do here is pull up the broad view radar. And so there's still another line with a cold front back to the west. So we've got a couple of lines to get through. In this tornado warning that we've been tracking now in south central Kentucky, um, that started with a uh, tornado warning for our area in northwestern parts of the mid-state two hours ago. And so these are moving along quickly, but the whole line of storms, which is producing the action, is not moving to the east nearly as quickly. And so we're going to be doing this all night long, past sunrise, and probably uh, into the first part of our Saturday. It, you know, it still looks like it's going to hang on until probably 10 o'clock on the Cumberland Plateau. How far is this from Nashville? If you're just waking up for a weather break, weather check before you get a little more rest, um, we're in pretty good shape right now in Nashville and really most of the mid-state. The main event is still oh, about 80 miles west of I-65. But what we're going to have to watch as we see some cooling in the middle levels of the atmosphere are these front runner cells that are trying to get going. They're struggling because if you've ever heard of the, the terminology, the atmosphere is capped. There's some warm air a few miles up and it's limiting development of those. But as some colder air comes in from the west, the storms are firing and they're getting really strong very quickly. And so we could see these front runner cells south of Nashville in the next hour to two hours uh, start to get a little more nasty. More likely, we wait until about four o'clock in the morning for Nashville and we run until about six to 6.30 for the bulk of the severe uh, threat, damaging threat. Still tornado warning, extremely dangerous situation in south central Kentucky. So if you know somebody in the eastern part of Logan County and in Warren County, let them know. Give them a call. They're probably already awake, but you don't want to assume anything on a night like tonight and just say, hey, have you heard? You've got two areas of rotation in your neck of the woods are coming your way. Plum Springs, you know somebody in Plum Springs, Bowling Green, Smith's Grove in Kentucky. That's not far north of Nashville. It's just up the street. So here's the latest with rotation detector. I'm going to check on that Hopkinsville radar because we might start to, we're still not seeing much in the way of um, uh, usable rotation from that. So we're not going to stay with that very long. And so we're going to focus on these two areas. Now, the good news is in the last 10 minutes, these areas of rotations are, are still significant, but have settled down some. Max rotation with this northern circulation is 110 miles an hour. Before we were up around 180. That's how, that's how intense the circulation was with the, with the northern one. And for the southern one, we're about the same, about 110. And so um, they both have a formidable structure with them, and they're both moving toward the northeast. Here's a 30-minute recap. But it looks like they're both sort of pulsing down, at least the northern one's pulsing down a little bit. Maybe we'll see this one down toward Auburn rob some of the strength of the northern one, and maybe the southern one will take over. We'll have to see. If that happens, it's going to get the south side of a Bowling Green over towards Smith's Grove. Um, but just something to watch in the next 30 minutes as it moves through Warren County. Lisa? Let's, let's do once again kind of a recap, a reset, and take a look at the entire picture. We've got the most intense storms right now here in Kentucky, as Dan has been telling you all about those, where they're headed, and things you need to do to be prepared for those. But you know, we're not done once we get these out of our hair, because look at this line that is off to the west here in West Tennessee, and it's moving fast, too, headed on towards the east. And this environment is still very favorable for us to see these storms continue to intensify. As a matter of fact, the storm that we see right here, showing up right there in Madison County, where Jackson is located, has the potential of 
perhaps prompting a tornado warning if that rotation continues to develop. So that's worthy of watching really, really closely. And what Dan's showing us here is how weak these storms were and how it hasn't taken very long for them to really start to grow and intensify here in just a 27 mile period right through there between that first line that he pointed out and then where those storms are now. So the environment definitely is conducive for these storms to continue to develop. And Dan was mentioning that cap a little while ago. We were under that cap throughout the day today, just kind of putting a hat on and you can't see those thunderstorms grow and blossom. Well, that is not the case now, and that is exactly what they're doing. They are starting to intensify in this area. So this is getting closer and closer to our viewing area as fast as it's racing out of Jackson with that severe thunderstorm warning in effect. So we can dive down and um, actually take a closer look here at once again our tornado warning. That's a little bit farther to the north, no doubt about that. Uh, that is over here moving into Bowling Green. Looks like this is going to impact the heart of Bowling Green. Two separate rotation areas. We see them right here with intense winds showing up with both of these. So pretty powerful storm developing for tonight as it lifts towards the northeast. And I, Dan's showing us how this has really grown. You can see from where it was initially, and now we're looking at 78.62. So over 100 mile per hour winds with this storm as it's moving towards Bowling Green. And then, of course, even another little batch where we're also seeing the potential for some rotation as well. And this about 10 miles outside of Bowling Green. So it's going to be there very, very quickly, as fast as these storms are racing tonight, around 60 miles an hour. So folks there in Bowling Green making sure that they're uh, in their safe place. And, you know, if you know someone in Bowling Green, go and give them a call and say, hey, I was watching Channel 4 out of Nashville and and you've got a storm headed right your way. We, want, we don't want them to be in bed tonight. We want them to be up and at them and ready to deal with this storm to get to their safe place with this tornado warning as this storm continues to lift off towards the northeast. The good news, though, these storms are moving on out of our area. But as I did mention, with this one expiring at 145, we do have that next round that is off to the west that will also be moving back into the mid-state as well. So you want to make sure that um, you, we are paying attention here. We're not out of the woods. Once this batch moves, Moves through, there is more over in West Tennessee that will continue to move into the mid state. And we can see that line stretches all the way down, all the way down to Texas tonight. Look at all that lightning along this line of storms as well. So there's much more to contend with tonight once this part of the line passes on by. It's going to take a little while to get here. Some estimations of around 2 a.m. or so moving into the Nashville area. Just to kind of a rough estimate right now when we may see that moving right here here into Middle Tennessee. But once we get on the back side of this, you know what's back here? Much cooler air. So once the front passes by, tomorrow's going to be a totally different day. But boy, we have to get through tonight first, don't we? We're going to keep a real close eye on this storm coming down 40 because, um, you know, if we do see that intensify, we might have another <coughs> tornado warning prompted. Dan? Yeah, Lisa, so that, that line, the, those parallel lines before with that distance of 27, that was the hour's worth of movement. Oh, very good. Hour's worth of movement. So, so given that, um, yeah, we're still probably ballpark a few hours away in Nashville. I do want to point something out. The, the March Nashville tornado, if you remember back then, there were some issues with people getting the wireless emergency alerts from the government on the, on the smartphones. And the, the reason for that is the, the cell service went down in a number of areas. Just got a report that the cell service is out in a number of locations in Breck County, Kentucky. Now, thankfully, that's not in our area, but it speaks to the threat of not having a NOAA weather radio. If you don't have a NOAA weather radio, which does not use the smartphone cell service towers, um, it's not as good. You need both. You need to know weather radio and the smartphone. And so uh, once the sun comes up, the storms clear your area. If you're listening to us in Southern Kentucky or Middle Tennessee, you've got to go to the store or get on Amazon, get on the internet, get it that way, get it sent to you for the next weather event. You've got to have a know weather radio. You've got to have redundancy of receiving watches and warnings. Now we're going to have to watch, as Lisa said, a whole bunch of storms. This is the one that's caused the problems over Bowling Green. By the way, whoever's directing in the back uh, or producing, if you could pull up the Western Kentucky University cameras, they have a great camera network in Bowling Green, 
and if there's a tornado that rolls over Bowling Green, we're going to see this thing uh, live on TV here in the, just the next few minutes. Um, so if you could have that ready. But all these cells, the, the, there's, there's a couple in, in Logan County. Now, for the time being, we're actually good in Logan County. Let's actually get a little tighter here. So we've had the tornado warning for a while. And uh, let's zoom on in. We'll look for areas of rotation. And we don't see any in your area. So you've got the all clear. Even though th this is an old tornado warning, the weather service is really bogged down in Louisville with this thing that's about to go right over Bowling Green. So, but if you're in Auburn, you're in the clear. Russellville, Lewisburg, you're in the clear. And this is getting very close to downtown Bowling Green. Let's check. Uh, and, and just as we suspected before, this southern cluster of rotation is robbing the energy from the northern extent. Why do I say robbing? It's taken it away because it's being fed by a strong south wind off the Gulf of Mexico. And so it's intercepting most of that energy, feeding it. And so that's why that southern rotation has really taken over. The bad news is, is that's the one that continues to be in line with downtown Bowling Green. So center of circulation right now around Blue Level Providence Road, U.S. Highway 68, which is Russellville Road. It connects essentially Bowling Green and Russellville. Crestmore, just west of Bowling Green. New picture just came in. And so the distance from the, the core of circulation with this thing, and there's that core, to downtown Bowling Green is probably six miles, four miles. So I don't know if we're starting to see some of those cameras in the back from Western Kentucky. Do we have any uh, accessible yet? All right, so we've got one and it shows you know, downtown Bowling Green, some lightning. You know, it's tough to resolve when you've got sheets of rain coming in, which is what they have. You can see the, as we, um, I don't know if we split screen or whatever, double box this thing, but Bowling Green is just in the thick of it right now. They're just getting dumped on. Rainfall rates with some of these storms. Now, thankfully, these storms are moving, so we're less concerned about tons and tons of rain. But this is the rainfall rate in Bowling Green, a couple inches per hour. Just west of you there, it's like seven inches per hour. But these storms are really on the move. And so given that, we're not going to see catastrophic flash flooding. We're not going to see a Waverly event. It's not happening. We're not going to see a flood of 2010. Um, that's not happening tonight because um, there'll be some flooding, but it's just not going to generate the same volume of rain because these storms are moving along. We are going to have to watch this corridor in through here. All that said, because anywhere that's going to get flooding in the next hour is going to be right there. It's going to be between Paris and Murray, Dover, Hopkinsville, Oak Grove, Russellville, and Bowling Green, because some of these cells are training along the same line. So that's what we'll have to watch for. But for most of you, that's not going to be the case tonight. Middle Tennessee in pretty good shape. Hopefully you have your smartphone fully charged if not if you went to bed with it beside your you know nightstand there and it's not plugged in this is the time to get up and uh, and plug it in you want a hundred percent as soon as the tornado warning is issued for battery power because you could be watching us online for an hour and that could that would that would shut down my phone pretty quickly so you want to make sure it's as good to go as you could be sometimes you don't have a um you know, sometimes you get a number of devices in the, in the bathroom and you get one set of outlets in there. You get two little plugs. And so just charge everything up, charge the iPad, have a backup. You get extra devices, charge them all. And so if one goes out, um, then you're good to go. We didn't mention this much tonight, if at all, and that is that you've got to have shoes in your uh, convenient, safe spot. You can't go in there without shoes. Why would you need shoes? It's in the house. Well, if a tornado comes through and it does some damage, it's going to knock out the power and then it's dark. And then you're potentially walking on broken glass or little shards of wood. And so you don't want to do that barefoot in the middle of the night. You know, we're not wearing shoes, but, um, you know, house shoes, nah, I'd go with the real sneakers so you can get out of there quickly and survey and make sure everybody's okay. Lisa. All right. Good advice. Good advice. I mean, so many things that you can take in there to to take care of business. And if you are prepping that with these storms moving off to the east, get your flashlight and take it in there, too, because these th things coming across tonight in the middle of the night. So we have been watching these storms since they started over here. 
And now this is that same storm that is tracked all the way up here into Kentucky, now into Bowling Green. And now we're watching the second round of storms all the way over to Jackson tonight. And this round moving along 40. It's going to be coming into Lexington before too much longer, maybe just passing just north of Lexington. But nonetheless, that's going to be marching right here into Middle Tennessee. And we will be dealing with that part of the storm just a little while. So we are not done yet. Yet. Over into Waverly and Linden, we're going to see some of the active weather moving in tonight and eventually into Nashville. The timing is about right. We could see it in Nashville around 2 a.m., but looks like it's maybe a little bit later than that at this point because we've already reached, uh, as you can see, 120. So I think we're going to be a little bit longer before it makes it here into the Nashville area. These storms continue to hold together. And remember, we really haven't seen anything down here, so the environment um, has not been worked over as much as what we're seeing here to the north. So we actually could see some of these storms develop and intensify in that area. So we're going to watch that very closely for tonight. But right now, the Right up here with these storms left, it's been folks up in Warren County and Bowling Green that have had to deal with the really active weather as of late. And remember, this has been a long time coming. I can remember when this started out, it was over around Martin, Tennessee, and it's continued to move up toward the northeast. Dan? All right, Lisa, we've got uh, one of our photojournalists, Brandon Smith, is that right? And he's out in Henry County in per year. And this is an area that was hit very hard tonight by the severe thunderstorm, probably the tornado as well. Brandon, can you hear me okay? All right, do we have a live picture from Brandon then? Okay, this is Brandon's live picture. And uh, Michael, did you say 911? 911 services are out in, in Henry County. And so you can see the folks there are very busy in a community of per year. Um, like ambulances. an ambulance there, Dan. Right, yeah, ambulance coming down the street, still raining. So that makes recovery very, very difficult. Um, people are, you know, skittish after dealing with what happened. Um, and they just hope that uh, someone's going to come along soon and, uh, and help them out. So we don't know the extent of the damage, but Brandon's up there right now on the ground as soon as we can get um, maybe a phone call with him or some some hard information. He's going to give it to us. There looks like a police car. You know, yeah, it sure does. I don't know if that's a power line down in the foreground, um, but it seems to be. You know, that's that's one of the things you got to watch out for. C circumstances that you don't think about developing in the wake of a tornado. You debris everywhere. Hot power lines sitting on the ground. You think you're going to call somebody on the phone and. You can't. The cell service is out. You know, in the plains, I used to live in the plains in Enid, Oklahoma, and people would bring to their safe spot pieces of metal to clank together to get the attention of somebody because you can't call sometimes. And so things to think about, maybe a, maybe a metal ladle and a small soup pot. Bring those two and you can make a lot of noise and get a lot of attention as recovery happens. This thing is right over Bowling Green right now. I don't know if we could um, take a look at what the Western Kentucky cameras look like. I'm gonna zoom back in, but it is right over downtown. You know, Dan, folks that live up there um, have said they, they may be seeing some, maybe some power lines and flashes from tower lines coming down, so incredible. Let, let, let's go to those live cameras. Do we have anything there in Bowling? It's right over, you could see it, it is right over um, and so let's just watch this and take this in. Wow. Yeah, it, it, lightning. It's yeah, tough to tell if it's a power flash or lightnings. Mm -hmm. the, the, I think typically the lightning strikes are a little more sudden like that. Yeah. And the power flashes are a little more, they have more of a trail. They may last a second or two. Um, you know, I don't know if that one fits the bill. It's still raining. We have the circulation right over Bowling Green. and it's pushing toward the east. Thank you for pulling that up once in a while. Just keep your eyes on it. Feel free to pull it up uh, at any moment, but I think the, it, it's happening right now. Let's check on the rotation. And so there it is. Let me turn off. Sometimes we get a lot going on in a storm and we've got too many spinning rings and it's just tough to make sense of what is going on. But it looks like the circulation just jumped to the east side of, of town. So Mount Victor, this looks like Cumberland Trace Road 
it's right over that area right now, um, north of Gotts, south of Loving. I'm sure our desk folks, uh, in a matter of moments, are going to be on the phone with the Warren County uh, emergency folks. I know they'll be overwhelmed up there, but maybe they'll get some information as to what just happened. Bowling Green Weather Station, it's called an ASOS, just gusted to 62. Now you think, well, 62, that doesn't mean a tornado. That could be ways away from this circulation. Mm -hmm. So they had a severe thunderstorm roll through where they didn't get the tornado. And, um, and so that's what the folks there in Bowling Green are dealing with. You know, God willing, everybody is safe and uh, nobody got injured from that. We don't know. Park City, next in line, Cave City, Horse Cave. You know, Lisa and I have mentioned Horse Cave on TV a number of times, and then we're getting farther away. It's gonna stay north of Glasgow, and it's gonna go to the main body of Kentucky, and the folks who watch Louisville television or Bowling Green, um, they'll be communicating with people on that. But we, we continue to watch it because a lot of us know somebody in Bowling Green. I personally do myself or you've been through Bowling Green uh, on your way to Louisville. I mean, you go right by the Corvette Museum. So hopefully everybody fared well with that tornado producing thunderstorm that just hit Bowling Green. There's that Madison County one, Lisa. It's just a, right. a tremendous lightning show. Look at the strikes, 282 in 20 minutes. Let's just track the strikes with this cluster right here. That's remarkable, more than 100 from that little cluster of storms. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's so all of these storms tonight, just so electrical out there, uh, just so shows how much energy we have going on tonight with these storms as they've been moving across. And this, of course, is really kind of the second wave, the first coming mainly to the north. And this one now making its way into Jackson. And let's look at this bow right through here. So we've got some winds on the front edge of that as it moves towards Lexington right now, headed up towards the east northeast. Uh, you know, and a heads up to folks over here in Linden, you know, you're likely to get in the, on the action with this. So are you in Waverly, too, as it moves in that general direction. Uh, in Huntington tonight, it's going to be reaching that community around 132, over to Clarksburg around 130, just past then, and Hollow Rock into that area at 141, Brewston at 142, and Wallersville over in Henderson County, 144. Now we see it's just been extended, Dan, that is going to include even more counties that at this point are in our viewing area included right there as we find it here as the storm is moving on towards the east. Uh, we're talking about um, folks that are almost almost to Waverly, but just off to the west of you there in Waverly. And the same goes uh, in Decatur County and in Benton County here. Um, we are looking for that warning in a place right now. Severe thunderstorm warning extending that. So at least they're staying below limits where we're not seeing circulation where we would, would prompt a tornado warning. But keep in mind, these storms can produce some very, very high winds as they move on towards the east. And that's exactly what we're seeing right through here with these storms. And you'll notice where they are in terms of uh, their proximity. Well, I'll tell you, it takes about two hours to get from Nashville to Jackson. And these storms are moving around 60 miles an hour. So at least a couple hours before we find it moving here. So more like that, uh, perhaps around maybe 3, 3.30 before those storms start to make their way here, which was kind of our original estimate as how quickly they could come through. So just heads up, that's what it looks like right now, just from a rough estimate looking at uh, how fast they're moving and where they are in relationship to us right now. So we'll uh, keep a close eye on that, keep you updated on these storms as they lift off towards the east. Dan? At least take a look at Chat, that. the uh, second ca the second comment up, per Warren County fire, Oh yeah. touchdown on Powell Street in Browning community houses damaged. Wow, so indeed that was a tornado that was up there in Warren County. And hey, Dan, you know, I think it would be interesting to show after we take a look at that and maybe show that path. Remember sure. how we talked about the rotation path a little earlier? Because that's been a long track system that we have seen coming through um, with maybe not on the ground that entire time, but nonetheless, I remember tracking it from way back into West Tennessee. But you can see this is the rotation path. And of course, we're just getting some confirmation here. It looks like it was 
was indeed a tornado touched down there in Bowling Green. And we had reports of that even earlier on. And when I first started talking to you about this storm, it was way back over near Martin, Tennessee. And that's back across the Tennessee River. And you can see, then we picked it up here around Paris, just off to the north of Paris. And it's continued to move all that way. So um, how about that tool that can give us an estimate of how long that path is? Look at that. Sure. We've had the reports of the tornadoes there. But that shows you we've had this same storm move quite some time. Not saying there was a tornado on the ground the entire time. But that's, that's quite a ways to move um, from one location over here all the way up to where we are up here in Bowling Green. Actually, where did, where did this start, Lisa? Because you Looks were like here. Looks like it started over Martin, Tennessee. Let's was go back. our first yeah. report. It's called a community um, share in there. It's when we first picked it up here, uh, off a little bit farther to the west. There we go. It's somewhere in this general vicinity. Well, right, I guess where? right in through here. Okay, uh, that Martin, first tee. Yeah. Around right. Martin, Tennessee is where I remember us picking that up and then tracked that sure. all night long until, you know, until where we are now, which is right over here in Bowling Green. Wow. So, what, 150 plus miles that um, we've had at least that same storm that all along the way, look at these T's, that's indicating where we had some reports of a tornado. So my goodness, what an event for those folks tonight with that storm uh, moving on out. And looks like that um, the Bowling Green is been allowed to, or at least it's moved beyond Bowling Green at this point, and that new warning is pushed it a little bit farther off. And then, of course, this right here is our severe thunderstorm warning. Is that a new one, Dan, or is that the one we were just talking about? It's, an, it's another west? new one, so let's okay. take a look at that. Looks like the Northwest. Ah, yeah. So we've got uh, folks over here in Bumpus Mills included in that particular warning with that storm moving towards the Northeast right now. And, you know, as we look at this, this is some of the same areas that we've already had some heavy downpours and some thunderstorm activity. So Bumpus Mills being familiar to you if you've been watching us for a little while. There's Linton up there. So you are just off to the north of the warned area. Kind of a, an odd shape here with this one. But this is in effect until 2 a.m. with this storm moving on towards the northeast right now. Uh, so a lot to watch tonight with these storms as they move across the mid-state. This one as though it may be producing some um, hail here. We had a little hail around Big Rock a little bit earlier and we've got at least some smaller size hail that is a possibility coming down here and what our our severe weather detector does is it it can give you an estimate of the hail that is inside that storm and also can estimate those winds for us as well. So we saying so long to this nasty storm here, but then we've got this second wave that is coming through and also is uh, looks like it could be um, causing some problems tonight for folks here as it moves right in some of those same locations again, moving into Stewart County and eventually coming across parts of Kentucky once again. Uh, so that's the northwest corner of Stewart County with some very strong winds that are likely reaching down to the surface tonight and causing some damage. We hope not, but they certainly have the possibility of doing that as they're moving off towards the northeast. A lot of lightning up here, too. I can see all those strikes with this part of the storm as well as that system that is over in Madison County right around Jackson tonight. Dan? All right, Lisa, we got a new, um, I switched, just for your reference, Lisa, I switched back to the Nashville chat. And so we've got a new report in Dover, um, that area, Stewart County. So Stewart County was hit, hit before um, by the cell that Lisa just tracked across going 154 miles. So it's called a long track supercell. And it continues to have such intense rotation that it either produces a tornado for much of that track or at least occasionally during the track. And so the EMA folks say, one injured, multiple trees and power lines down, multiple structures damaged, concentrated in Stewart County here in the 2300 block of Highway 120. So in Big Rock, one minor injury. Thankfully, it's minor um, as that tornado went on through there. So that's just, and where's Big Rock in relation to Dover? Well, let me show you on the map. So we zoom down into Stewart County and we're looking for Big Rock. Where's our friends in Big Rock? It's usually there. Lisa, do you remember where Big Rock is in I, relation to Dover? <laughs> you're in the right. Yeah, it was, I think it was, well, there it goes. There's northeast of Dover. There it is. Right okay. up 79. <laughs> it was lost in the sea of thunderstorms. So there it is, just northeast of downtown. Okay. That's some hailed so, reports there a little earlier, too. That's right. That's yeah, right. From coming in from that area.
Hey, hey, it's looking interesting over toward the radar site. So like we talked about before, the atmosphere through a new tornado warning. Let's take a look at this before I get to that comment. And let's see what we have here with this one. What a busy night. Got it. Madison County, just east of Jackson. Lisa, look at that one. Wow. Coming right down 412. And Should so, I call my parents to make sure they're in their safe place over abs there? Absolutely. <laughs> go ahead That's and a do little, that. A little bit past them, though. I think we're good to go there. Good. All right. So let's get the expiration time, and then we'll come back to Nolansville, because it looks like a little cell has just popped up there. And so tornado warning now in effect for the east side. So that's, that's the east side of Jackson, so that's Madison County. That's also Henderson County around Lexington. That's also southern parts of Carroll County around just south of Huntington until 2 o'clock. And in the northern part of Chester County, north of Henderson. So Henderson and Huntington, you're not in this. Lexington, right in the heart of it. And Jackson, you're just west of there until 2 o'clock in the morning. Current time now, 1.34. And so the main event has not yet reached the Tennessee River along Interstate 40. We're still thinking around 4 o'clock or so for Nashville, unless we get some of the trouble that develops out ahead around Nolansville. But because we have this new tornado warning, before we address that, let's find the circulation and do a new track for you. And so it's right out in this neck of the woods. Now, the tricky thing with storms around Jackson is that they are essentially equidistant from the Nolansville, that's our 41 real-time radar, the Nashville National Weather Service radar, and the Memphis radar, all about, I don't know, 120 miles, something like that, 110 miles. And so we're getting a picture right now of what's happening at 13,000 feet in the atmosphere, so two and a half miles up. And so generally speaking, oh, it looks like it's increasing a little bit. Generally speaking, we're going to see a different um, rotation picture than we would around the ground, and it's going to be tilted as well in the atmosphere. So all we can do is give our best effort. I'm going to zoom out and give you a good track here. Best effort on the exact position of this thing, because these storms are really tilting forward tonight um, because of the very, very strong winds. Wildersville, 147. I want to find more towns. There's got to be more towns impacted. Let's do this again. So main heart of circulation, let's just call it right there. Northeast at about 60. Wildersville, 148, ballpark time. So that's not quite to our friends over around Perry County, you know, but it's getting pretty close to in time our friends who are going to be north of Parsons, so we're talking about you along 412 around, looks like Yellow Springs, Sugar Tree, Aikens Chapel, and Hydro. This probably will stay north of Parsons. As you can see, it's moving just north of Dewey, so east-northeast. So in time that it would take it into northern Decatur County, the border of Humphreys and looks like Perry counties. Let's check for communities here. So right along 40, so along Highway 13 in time, maybe between Nolansville and Hurricane Mills if it holds together, and then maybe in time Bon Aqua. I think Bon Aqua was hit during the 2008 outbreak, wasn't it? Yes, I think Fair, so. Fairview and Bon Aqua, I think it started around Bon Aqua. Um, so they don't, they don't need more action there for sure, but that's just something we'll be watching in northern parts of Hickman County in time. Now I do want to, before I send it back to you, just show you this stuff, and this is new activity and it just rolled over the radar site. Forewarn real-time radar, we're the only live station, the only t TV station in Middle Tennessee with our own live radar, and it's down in Nolansville. It gives a great coverage of the surrounding Nashville area, and it shows this shower. There's no lightning with it, no strikes, but this is what we have to watch for, for something to intensify, have a strong enough up updraft to eventually become severe or maybe even rotate, so. Lisa? Dan, I got a little update for folks there at home just on just how devastating these storms have been tonight. You know, we talked about how the storms had originated off to the west. We just got a report in from Obion and Lake County in West Tennessee that three people have died tonight as a result of those tornadoes. Just terrible news coming out of this general area um, that's off north of Memphis. And as those storms tracked all the way up, and that is the report tonight, three deaths associated with that. And of course, we know the 
there was some devastation in Arkansas with at least two people reported dead there from a nursing facility um, in Arkansas, in central Arkansas, before those storms made their way here into Tennessee. So they've been really dangerous storms tonight. And now we're, we've said so long to this first batch, at least there are no warnings up here. Still some heavy downpours, but we've got a couple of different uh, severe thunderstorm warnings as we've been telling you about tonight. So let's take a look. We'll just start back up here again with the tornado warning remaining in effect until 2.30. And this is the one that we have here to the south, the one that Dan was talking about in Jackson, pretty, covering a pretty large area. And then in the middle of that warning is a tornado warning for a portion of that storm too. So this is just what's gonna be impacting uh, the rest of the mid-state as we go through the night. These storms may be just a little bit slower, about 50 mile per hour um, movement as they come out of West Tennessee and move into East Tennessee right now. And then we do have another warning and this is the one that Dan is pointing to now. This is until two o'clock and this is um, right here for some folks who have already dealt with the tornado warning a bit earlier and now they're going to see more rain moving into some of these same spots. We've already had some reports of some damage in here and we've got all this coming back over across some of these same spots. This right here is in the northwest corner of Stewart County and of course that's where we had um, some reports earlier today and we know that they've got some problems there around the Dover community too and that's uh, this one's just off to the northwest there of Doverman as this uh, storm moves off towards the northeast right now we'll be crossing or moving very close to you along highway 79 with that storm but still a lot of rain even with some of these cells that aren't prompting a warning right now. We've got some heavy downpours there over to Oak Grove and this next storm is going to be moving your way if you are in Oak Grove. So let's take a look at some of those times moving to Bumpus Mills around about 143 and over to Garrettsburg at 2 o'clock. Fort Campbell around 204. Oak Grove at 205 and then continuing to Hopkinsville around 205. Don't want to miss that Northwest High School around 205 as well. And continuing over to Sherwood Forest around 206 and Hermitage Estates around 206. So if you're in those areas, it's not a tornado warning, but it is a severe thunderstorm warning and they can produce some very high winds as they come through. And tonight, even out ahead of these thunderstorms, the winds have been so very high. Going back over here, this is just now starting to move into our viewing area around Henderson County. We are looking at that cell moving out of Madison County. And Dan is denoting here with these lines, the rotation. So we've got winds blowing toward the radar site, winds blowing away from the radar site, showing us where that rotation is taking place. And so we track from just out ahead of it. That's going to bring it over to Wildersville around 152. And I know there's some other communities here in here. Plus, we've got um, I-40 right through here as well. So anybody on I-40 tonight dealing with the high winds and the potential of a tornado moving right through that area too. This is uh, Timberlake and the Beach River community as well with this storm moving on by. And there is Union Cross and Bargerton, also one of the communities that's in the path of uh, this potential tornado over to Union Cross too. And there's Wildersville that we've picking and picked up. And you may recognize Parker's Crossroads. That's right on the interstate, right before you get to Lexington as you come through. So it looks like that location is also right there in the path of this storm. And then we follow it on up. And of course, even farther up to the north, we can get a track on the storm that is right over here around Huntingdon and Brewston. This part of the storm is going to be moving towards you in Camden. And we're looking for some pretty high winds with that as well. New Johnsonville will be in the path of that storm. And here's some of those estimated arrival times over to Camden Central High School. We see it right there around 151. And Camden, downtown area there at 152. Continuing over to New Johnsonville right around 2 o'clock this morning as those storms continue to track off towards the northeast to look for some high winds with that and also some lightning and some heavy downpours with this storm. Look at all the lightning back here, all stretched all the way around Tresvent. So a lot of lightning with the storm as it moves on to the east. And then we can follow this trail on down right on over to Memphis and even continuing 
down across the straight li state line into parts of Arkansas, but it even keeps going through Louisiana. So we are looking for more of this activity before we are over with tonight. And, you know, if you think about it, with these storms moving, kind of the line is shifting east, but the storms move in more of a northeasterly direction. So what's down here certainly could be what we're going to see later tonight. But look at all these tornado reports. All these T's are indicating where we had tornadoes reported with these storms. The W's represent the wind reports that we've had, any wind damage, a lot of them off to the northwest. And then you can see these um, H's reporting where we had some hail. But that's quite a bit of tornadic activity tonight with these storms. And uh, this one was, let's see, over, what is that city there? The Four miles northwest of Bay. Yeah, Bay. I'm not familiar with that particular community, but that's where that originated from. And then moving right on along this whole line, um, you can see them here as the storms have moved on towards the northeast around Sandburg. Sandburg Fire um, Station there took a direct hit. People trapped and damaged in that. A lot of damage there. And then we see one around Hickman as the storm came through there. And this is the one with multiple power lines down, just impassable around Kenton. And this is the one we've been tracking for such a long time at this point. Now we're just getting all these reports and major damage in Mayfield. We showed you pictures before and after of the courthouse a little while ago. Just really devastating there. And we've got this report out of Dresden. At least one person injured in Dresden with six buildings damaged. That's definitely that storm that is now in Kentucky. And this is over around Dover, where we had multiple trees and power lines down. Some structure damage there, concentrated in the 2300 block of Highway 120 over in Big Rock. Had one minor injury reported there, too. So confirmation that these storms have been, you know, producing some nasty conditions tonight. Central City debris from homes and billboards along the West Kentucky Parkway, just west of Central City tonight. So that was just out of our viewing area. And then here still in our viewing area is over at um, Clarksville Outlaw Field. Remember this one, the weather station there, the ASOS as they call it, reporting near 60 mile per hour winds as that storm moved on by a little earlier. So this line is going to continue to hold together. And just to remind you, we are under this tornado warning right through here, and that is going to be in effect until 2 a.m., I believe it is, for that warning. So we've got about 15 more minutes for that warning as it comes uh, out of Madison County into Henderson County. And this is something that was updated a little earlier today. This tornado watch uh, was in effect until 2 a.m. And, you know, after assessing things, uh, the Storm Prediction Center decided that maybe it's going to take a little longer for all these storms to get on out of here. So it has been issued now until 5 o'clock with the potential for more of these storms to produce tornadoes tonight. And that will continue to swing on to the east as we go through the next several hours, the storms will. And looks as though, you know, perhaps weakening somewhat as they get to Cumberland Plateau, but we're still, uh, we're still wanna keep you on alert tonight as well. It's just gonna be a little bit longer before those storms make it into your general area. But did report tonight that, you know, we had some deaths over in West Tennessee, O'Brien and Lake County with these storms as they moved right across that area. And with Dan showing you those T's, some of those over in West Tennessee. So a lot happening tonight and a lot more storm activity to go. Dan? All right, Lisa. So distance, if you're, well, we get a flash flood warning. I bet it's, I bet it's northwest of Nashville where we've had all that rain. So let's take a look at that one here. And flash flood warning in effect now for, yep, it's a huge one. So this is essentially in that whole zone that we're talking about before from Murray, Kentucky, up through Hopkinsville, all of Todd County, and probably half of Trigg County. So four counties in this because of all the rain that's fallen, because these storms continue to train over the same general area. So I'm going to show you how much rain has fallen in that zone on our forewarn real-time radar. Let me go zoom down to that neck of the woods, and it shows right here. So around Hopkinsville, rain continues to fall. And so if you work overnight, a number of people work in emergency services, maybe they work at hospitals, you got to get to work. I mean, you can't not go to work when you have those sorts of jobs. When you're on television, you got to get to work. When you're tracking the weather, 
This thing runs all night until 945. And look at the 24-hour rainfall. I could use the three-hour, but I'm going to just use the 24. And it shows these amounts right along the Tennessee-Kentucky line. Two to, there's got to be a spot that's pretty close to three, 2.9. So pretty much three inches, almost four inches in parts of uh, just, it looks like north, northern parts of Henry County. And so we have that going on there, the flash flood warning. And now a brand new severe thunderstorm warning. And so let me clear this up and we'll pull that one. up. Wow, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, essentially the weather service is saying, you know what, we don't see little individual areas of rotation with this, but because there's so much wind energy through the whole atmosphere, uh, we're just going to see damaging wind probably up and down this line. So the best way to do this is to do a lot of individual tracks. And by the way, this expires at three. And so it's going to be in effect for a long time. And notice it's still west of Nashville. And so our ballpark four to six o'clock, maybe 630 timing in Nashville, um, I think in that general area works. So we still have another couple hours of good sleeping for the greater Nashville area. But let's do a couple tracks. And so we'll start with the northern extent of this line. And so always the worst of the weather is going to be on the leading edge. But sometimes, like we had just the other night, because the wind is so active through the whole atmosphere, it can continue. As long as it's raining very heavily, those bursts of wind can continue. It sounds like the, the side of the house is being uh, power washed. I think you'll hear that tonight as these come in from the west. Tennessee Ridge 154, current time 149. You're watching 41 Real Time Radar on News 4. We appreciate you joining us for this severe weather coverage. And we're not going to leave you until the threat is done. And so as long as we have warnings, we're going to stay with you through this, um, especially tornado warnings. Oakwood 156 in Tennessee, Cumberland City. So we're in Stewart County with that one, 2 o'clock in the morning. Woodlawn 201, uh, Aaron 202. It looks like Northwest High School up in the Clarksville area in your neck of the woods around 206. So you can see where Clarksville is, and it's right here. So there could be some damaging wind gusts coming in there um, probably in the next, say, 20 minutes. Let's do another track. Do you have something, uh, do you have something Lisa, or should I just uh, finish this track? No, go here? ahead with that track, yeah. Okay, all right. And so moving northeast at about 60, ballpark time. Pursley at 205, New Johnsonville before that in 10 minutes in Waverly County High School at 207. Let's go farther down. Not to forget, this is a tornado warning here. That's in effect until 2. We'll see if they extend that. Uh, but we'll do from the most dangerous part of that cell a track. And it looks like the rotation's right in through there. So moving east, northeast. Pretty rural spot there, so not a whole lot along Interstate 40. If you ever go out that way toward Memphis, um, you know what I'm talking about. There's just not a lot to stop in that uh, part of the mid-state. And in the southern part of the line, and that shows damaging wind gusts, very, very likely right heading toward Perry County. It's going to take a little bit for Perry County. It's probably going to be more than an hour for you, but it looks like Decaturville, um, not more than an hour. I want to correct myself. It's going to be about 20 minutes. Wow. Perryville at 209. So this thing is buzzing along and it gets into Perry County pretty quickly. Lisa. All right, so uh, we've just had this in, intense line of storms move through, and we did have another warning up here in Stewart County. So that's what I wanted to let folks know, that that warning has been canceled for Stewart County. So good news there, but of course we're seeing part of southern Stewart County being, being encompassed in this huge warning Dan was just telling you about. Also, that includes you in Clarksville, too, uh, that severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued. And we have a severe thunderstorm warning here as well for Oak Grove and Hopkinsville as this next round of storms moves through. We've got the first tornadic batch out of here, and now we've got some of the same spots. Going to see more activity now with this next round. We're talking heavy rain. We're talking some heavy downpours to say the least and also the lightning and then we look at the winds too that continue to be quite potent with these storms this is going to be moving over to elkton around 202 whippoorwill around 210 and around cave springs around 212 and then over to russellville at around 217 too so a lot going on here tonight as these storms all shift towards the east right now and we knew all along folks up here in kentucky would likely see a lot of this activity tonight and that is exactly what's happening with these thunderstorms moving into the same location 
locations here. So Christian and Todd County, a severe thunderstorm warning for you for tonight. As these storms move across, we could actually see some hail with these. And look at that. Dan's honing in on it around two inch size hail right through there with those winds up to around 60 miles per hour showing up right here on our storm detector. And look how just bright that looks, that pink and then the black in the middle. So usually when we see this, usually saying, ah, probably a little bit of hail showing up in that storm. And that's exactly what's going on in that particular storm tonight. It's going to be heading towards Trenton very soon as it moves towards the east and kind of a northeast drift with this storm as well. So watch out if you're in that general area too. All right, so... Um, also got a little report back. Maybe better go over back to those um, storms in Benton County right now near Camden and Lexington, Henderson County, because we're getting some reports of maybe a little more rotation that is starting to show up here. So might want to check that out right now, see if we can see any of that showing up on the radar here. Once again, this is an area, and Dan mentioned this a little while ago, that you almost have to switch between radars because you get out this far and, and you are pretty far away from, from that radar site. So you have to find out which is going to be the best one to take a look at. And it looks like we've got a new tornado warning. Should I try this here and see if we can pop down to it? Sure. That should uh, work. There we go. All right, Good. so here it is, this new tornado warning that we were talking about. It's right in through here. So we're talking about some of the same spots, just a continuation of this. And this one does include um, folks that we find here, well, let's see, north of Parsons. And then you can see well off to the east there of Huntington, right there along, let's see, uh, 641. So in that general area, um, what are some of those counties that we're, we're looking at that are included? There's several counties in there. Uh, we've got Henderson County um, is a part of that warned area. And right on over to Perry County, looks like a part of that as well. <coughs> maybe um, maybe just um, a portion there of Humphreys County or just off to the west of Humphreys County? Looks like Benton, Carroll, Decatur, Henderson until 2.30. There we go. Yeah. So that's a brand new tornado warning just issued there. You can see that line and that's and that once again is an area too or a little more rural right through there. But we start to pick up a little little population there along the interstate a little bit. At least we know we've got some more folks that are moving moving along the interstate there and noted noting where we've got perhaps a little bit of rotation there off to the north of Lexington with that storm and that would be very close to the interstate right there on the interstate as a matter of fact we see it right through here with this latest tornado warning that has been issued there until 2 30 in the morning um, natchez trace state park is that that area and this storm is screaming fast moving off to the northeast about 70 miles per hour and that tornado warning till 2.30 a.m. as we see here. So uh, these storms are starting to gain a little bit of strength. They're moving into an area where we have not had any storms. And Dan's talked about it. We've talked about it all night long about the wind energy that is out there as well. We've got a very warm, moist air mass in place. And that's kind of helping to fuel the fire, too, to get these storms going as we've um, been noting throughout the evening, and they are certainly coming to fruition as they continue to develop and intensify here. New tornado warning means a good time to remind you where you need to head during this uh, tornado warning. And Dan is highlighting that information there. And we're highlighting where you need to go right now. Lowest level of your home, the interior room. You want to make sure you're protecting your head from flying debris. So how are you going to do that? Well, pillows, blankets, and even a helmet always offer good protection for you. Um, make sure that if you're in a mobile home, that you leave that mobile home and find yourself a safer place, perhaps into a low-lying area, a ditch, a culvert, as long as it doesn't have water in it, because uh, mobile home, definitely not a safe place to be. So make sure you take that um, advice and head to that general area right now, uh, either away from your mobile home, over to a friend's house, or into the center of your home. The basement's a great place to be, or you can go to a bathroom or perhaps um, an interior closet will also be a good 
spots because flying debris is, is one of the big dangers with tornadoes and want to make sure that you're kind of building a fort, putting as many walls between you and the outside as possible. Let's head back over to that radar and find out what it's looking like now uh, for folks there in Benton Carroll, Decatur, and Henderson County with that warning in effect until 2 o'clock. There it is. And we last looked at the radar and we're seeing it right here. That's rotation, that circulation that we're picking up on with our wind detector, our rotation detector showing us where those winds perhaps are circulating and that is what's prompted this warning as it's moving very very fast this storm around 70 miles per hour and these storms the whole leaning edge getting closer and closer to Nashville and Dan is estimating around 75 miles away so it's going to be a little while longer perhaps you know maybe around three o'clock or so before that storm starts to make its way in maybe a little bit earlier than that but um, that looks to be the the general timing that we're seeing right now with that tornado warning um, and that potential tornado and that line moving into Nashville. Dan? All right, so we're watching this. Now, now these storms are actually moving along in a, in, a, in a line that's pretty well even with Nashville. So we've been talking tonight about the start time in Nashville, and yeah, it looks like it is going to be before 4 o'clock now because, again, they're, they're, they're pushing out pretty quickly. So, but first in line would be Waverly and Dixon. You can see behind me there, um, and in Nashville, and then up into Sumner and Wilson counties with the movement that we have this evening or this morning, I should say. Now it's two o'clock on full worn real time radar. Don't forget we had the flash flood warning issue in Southern Kentucky. And so that's there now until 945, a flash flood warning for Callaway, Trigg, Christian, and all of Todd counties. There they've gotten two to three inches of rain and the rain continues to fall. And the storms east of there continue to cause rain over where the tornado actually hit. And so we do have information that it looks like uh, the tornado did hit in Bowling Green. And, um, and we'll get more information to you as soon as we can share more uh, with you. Uh, but before it looked like it did, uh, it did hit in part of Bowling Green as it moved on toward the northeast. And what's left of that storm is around Campbellsville right now. So back around Hopkinsville, these are just severe thunderstorms. I say just severe because we don't see any clusters of rotation. That's what we want tonight. We want um, general severe thunderstorms because they're easier to deal with um, than rotating thunderstorms that are producing tornadoes. Um, severe thunderstorms can produce tornadoes at any time, and we have some areas of rotation we're going to have to watch carefully, even in this pocket of rain in Southern Kentucky. There's that rain. So here's a couple areas of rotation. Here's one. Now, the good news about areas of rotation, generally speaking, behind the wall of rain is that they're elevated. There are areas of rotation that are elevated. This one back on the west side of Hopkinsville, probably not going to reach the ground. This one over on the east side of Elkton, south side of Elkton, we're going to have to watch. Um, no tornado warning for that, but it looks like some rotation is trying to develop there. Um, moving back toward Russellville. So we'll keep you posted on that. In the meantime, just stay indoors and away from windows. Be in the comfort of your home and you'll hear the rain, the wind driven rain come on by and just washing the side of the house and it's coming in waves. So in Southern Kentucky, northwestern parts of the mid state, there could be a few more inches of rain, which is going to lead to additional flooding. Dover, it's still coming down, moderate rain there. We had some really rough storms in your area before. Big Rock looks like it was hit by a tornado just a few miles northeast of downtown Dover. So up 79. That storm now is long gone. The strongest storm in the mid-state right now, or about to cross into the mid-state, is this one just to the west of the Tennessee River. There's actually two of them, but the one that's farther south has stronger rotation. And it has the tornado warning, and that's why it's the it's the the winner right now in terms of strength. That's the one that is in line with Nashville. This is a time lapse for the last 30 minutes, and so look at where the leading edge is right here, current time, and the leading edge was something like back here. So this thing is blasting along another 30 minutes, one hour. We're getting into the three to four o'clock hour should be in Davidson County if it if it holds its own and, and given the situation tonight with the wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico feeding these storms with all that warmth and humidity and the very strong winds high above the ground tonight we've got winds probably 150 miles an hour uh, six miles up tonight 
and coming off the Gulf of Mexico, coming in from the south or southwest, um, probably at 30 to 40 miles an hour. So the, the atmosphere is rotating and just you get a, a thunderstorm coming along with an updraft and sometimes it can tilt that rotation up on its end. That's how a tornado forms, um, or at least the biggest of the tornadoes. So I'm gonna stop this time lapse. We'll check on the rotation and we'll do another storm track for you. And it looks like we're now st still scanning a couple miles above the ground because we're so far from the radar, but it looks like uh, it might be trying to get more organized. Um, so it's right in that zone. Let's do a storm track of that. So it's in northeastern parts, of, northwestern parts of Decatur County, uh, moving east-northeast at about 59. Lobelville, potential tornado in your area at 224. Hurricane Mills, no stranger to damaging weather at 227. And Bucksnort at 230. So we told you before it's going to roll over northeastern parts or north, northern parts of Hickman County, I should say. And that absolutely looks to happen in time, eventually on its way toward western Williamson, southern Cheatham, and then the main body of Davidson County. Lisa? that rotation and it looks like we've got a new tornado warning that's going to be coming out it will include Houston and also Humphreys County. So still talking about this just up this line here up towards Camden and that's where that warning should be. So that's what the National Weather Service is telling us they're going to issue a new warning including parts of Humphreys County and also for parts of Houston County and that's for some circulation that's happening just off to the north of Camden. So we can uh, check that out for you. So it's going to be right in through here and this will include uh, some of the counties that you see Houston and also Humphreys right there on our map. So that's why we checking that out. And there's Big Sandy right there. Uh, I'm not seeing Camden come into the window view there, but there's our tornado warning just coming out there with this thunderstorm capable of producing a uh, tornado. You want me to do it here? Um, yeah, you can there do the go. next one. Let's locate it, um, let's see, about 10 miles east of Springville and also 12 miles north of Camden, moving to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour right now. Um, so as the storm moves into this area, that's going to mean that folks in Erin uh, could see some of that activity, could see that tornado, potential tornado, because there's no confirmation. This is a radar indicated tornado, just starting to see some of that circulation taking place in this area. But there's Springville right there as the storm is going to be moving to the the east uh, with this particular storm right now marching eastward it's a lot of lightning with this one 36 uh, lightning strikes within the, about the this a tiny window that you see here and there's the particulars on the storm tornado warning in effect until 2 30 this morning with the storm that we see here so there's dan looking at that rotation and it's just um as you can see off to the east there uh, or southeast of uh, big sandy right through here showing up kind of a broad rotation right through here but enough so to prompt the national weather service to issue that tornado warning and we'll get some timing here Erin, around 2.25 in the morning. It'll head over to Houston County High School around 2.28. And Adams Crossroads will be the next location. About 2.33 is the estimated arrival time for those. If you're in any of those spots, please be sure you head to your safe spot because this is your early warning. So you've got about 10, 15 minutes if you're in some of those spots I was just telling you about to make it to your destination, wherever you're going to be inside your home. At lowest level, and that's going to be a basement if you've got it. If not, just the first floor of your home and into the interior parts. We had some questions earlier. Where do you go during an apartment? If you're in an apartment, well, you want to head to the center of the apartment. And hey, if you know the neighbors downstairs, if you're downstairs, if you're just in a two-story apartment, head down there. 